I walked minimum 10 miles a day <sighs> in Japan. How your dogs doing? <laughs> My body fell apart last day. I had like a crazy infection thing here my finger somehow i don't know maybe from touching monkeys and shit, but yeah. uh <laughs> uh which i did do uh, <laughs> you're not allowed to touch them but i touched them <laughs> uh, Let's make history. Ready? I'm so ready. Hello, welcome. It's hard work time. Wow. wow. How are you, Bo? I've, I've missed you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They don't understand. You know, they, they've, they've seen two weeks back to back of episodes, but it's actually been like three or four since we've recorded one. Yeah. Which is like, not only are we recording, we're catching up, we're making plans, we're talking about stuff. How was your journey? It was, I mean, it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Is it still the coolest place in the world? <laughs> yes. Yes. So I just went to Japan for 10 days. Finally took my, my first vacation. First like actual vacation of my entire life. Yeah. Like much. adult, do whatever I want. Trip. Of like, okay, I'm going to a place I really want to go to and I'm going to do all the stuff I really want to do. Mm -hmm. I can't recommend that enough. <sighs> not even just Japan, just doing that in general. I'm not, I don't, I don't think I as a traveling musician ever understood the appeal of travel. Dude, I, f I fully agree with what you're saying right now. It's like, once you do it right, it's like, oh. Now I, I get the appeal of travel when you're going to a place that you like. <laughs> yeah. And there's no place I like more. There's a lot of places I don't like. Mm -hmm. Where the idea of going back to them is like, no, I want to be home. I'd rather, I'd rather sit in this chair. Yeah, right. Than go to bleep uh, <laughs> uh but but japan is yes it is still the best place ever uh for i feel feel for them because the the yen is really low right now did you clean up i i truly do it it was i made out like a bandit what what are some acquisitions i got a sepultura shirt i got a beneath like an og beneath the remain shirt i got a boss tones long sleeve <laughs> which is insane yeah that's crazy I got like eight pairs of pants. <laughs> so many pants. Did you fit it all in your original luggage or did you have to buy? No, one? we brought a collapsible genius duffel. Of course you did. Had to. Yeah. Do we, we got so many little toys, you know, <laughs> dude, look I, at this. I, I know someone who likes to purchase many items. Oh, dude, you know, we love our items. Look at the samurai Mickey. Oh God. Oh dude. How was Disney world? It's cool. It's very similar. Okay. To but the stuff that's not to Disneyland. To Disneyland. The, okay. I didn't go to the Tokyo Sea one, which I guess is the one that's like completely unique. Gotcha. Now I know. Um, but the the stuff that is unique to the park is really cool. Like the Monsters Inc. ride is uh it's like a it's kind of like an Astro Blasters type thing. Yeah. But you use flashlights to find boo. Oh. So it's like interactive and you get points based on like how many times you can find her. Oh, and like cool. Mike Wazowski speaking Japanese is like the best. <laughs> Does it sound like Billy Crystal? Ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a a guy speaking Japanese who his name happens to be Mike Wazowski. It's amazing. Um and then everything is Big Hero 6 themed. Oh. Which is one of my favorite recent Disney movies. Amazing. And it makes sense. Because it's it's like fictional it's San Francisco, so it's like a fictional city. Uh, but yeah, it's the best place ever. It's your. It is highly technologically advanced and so culturally rich at the same time. Interesting. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Where you can you can take a ten minute train to like the oldest temple you've ever seen, and then and like the rest station of the temple, you can take a shit on the warm yeah. toilet. Yeah. With a heat seeking bidet. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks your ass off. <laughs> It's unbelievable. It's talk, the best place ever. Talk to me about food. What do we eat? All right. So I'm sure the listeners hear all the time. People go to Japan and talk about 7-Eleven. Yeah. It, I, it, it's, you got to see it to believe it. You know, 7-Eleven, Family Mart, 
their convenience stores are their fast food tier. But like higher. Yeah, yeah, like like on our t- tier list, it would be like a B. <laughs> it would yeah, be like hundred percent. Oh, I'll go there, no problem. I, yeah. I ate there in some capacity every single day mm-hmm. because a lot of coffee places aren't open early, which is interesting. Interesting, like coffee places in Osaka, where we stayed, which highly recommend. <laughs> there was only one that opened early, and it was like a Norwegian coffee place hmm. which was really fucking good oh, it's okay. called fug uh fuglin <laughs> so it was just us texting each other in the morning every day like anybody want to get fugly <laughs> and then, and then we'd, it, we'd indulge but the dude so, so every morning before going to fugly i would get the chicken uh, katsu sandwich oh. from 7-eleven yeah or the pizza bun yeah yeah dude the pizza bun is fucked up i saw you get that like on one of your first stories after arriving <sighs> it was one of the first things i did was like ah pizza bun <laughs> uh and then but the thing if we had access to the 7-eleven chicken sandwich oh. i would have no problems like the, the uh, such a huge part of my day is fuck what do i eat today yeah right and if i could walk to 7-eleven and get that little chicken sandwich I'd be fine. I'd, first of all, I'd be skinny and ripped <laughs> because it'd just be like, I can go to the gym and then go get this damn chicken sandwich. Yeah. I understand why there's so few fat people there, but there's no diet soda. I, dude, I, it's a mystery to me. I've never been able to unlock it because like noodles and rice and carbs are carbs. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't. It, but it's kind of like all of Tokyo is like when you go to New York, yeah, right? Yeah. You're eating pizza and pasta, but you're somehow not losing weight because you're walking everywhere. It's got to be like I walked minimum 10 miles a day oh, in Japan. How are your dogs doing? <laughs> my I my body fell apart last day. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. And then you went straight to a show. <laughs> I had like a crazy infection thing here my finger somehow oh, no. and then got one on the same finger on the other hand what i don't know how i don't know maybe from touching monkeys and shit but yeah. uh <laughs> uh which i did do uh, <laughs> you're not allowed to touch them but i touched them <laughs> uh my feet were falling apart i broke in new doc martens <laughs> Oh, dude. By walking 10 miles a day. Oh, my God. I bet they fit like a glove now, though. Oh, they're great. They feel they're like the, a... chel- the, the insulated Chelsea's. With yeah, the... I saw them. They were nice. <sighs> they're nice. They're warm. They're, they're warm. nice. Um, they're built for Chicago when I was wearing them in Tokyo. Um, <laughs> what is the uh, like the fanciest food you got? Uh, we got sushi with Zuma and yeah. Tena. Yeah. And he took us to like an omakase sushi type experience. Fuck yeah. It was very good. I will say most of the like restaurant meals we had, yeah, were borderline disappointing. Really? Borderline. Not yeah, this yeah. one. The sushi was great. But it kind of felt like we were going to the wrong places every time. Mm. But then Lana would be like, "Okay, this this TikTok says this place is good." And then it would be unbelievable. <sighs> but uh I didn't have I had good skemen there. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called. Um, but it didn't have a single like amazing bowl of ramen, which was a bummer. You know what? When we were there, I didn't either. I, I defaulted to udon like every time. Yeah. I we had ramen. udon one time and it was pretty good. Dude, we had udon at like at the Mount Fuji like visitors center. Mm. And it was, and was one insane. of the best bowls I had the whole time. No joke. It's I believe awesome. it. The the first time I went, we stayed at the same hotel that every band stays at in Shinjuku. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, it's like the, it's like a sex hotel next to the Samurai Museum. Yep. And there's a shitty little ramen place on the corner. And that was the first ramen I had in Japan ever. And it blew me away. Mm. And I didn't feel that again. But I got the Jap- the pancakes, the fluffy pancakes. Oh, dude. dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are they doughy or are they airy? They're so fluffy. Lovely. It's just, we ordered, so I went with uh, Lana, Mac and Brittany Miller, and Erica Perez. Only three of us went to the pancakes, but we, we, you have to like put a down payment on them to get them in the morning. So we went at 830 and they were like, come back at noon. Whoa. 
you have to do same day reservations because it's so gnarly. Whoa. So we had to line up at 8 a.m. Uh, paid for five plates of pancakes <laughs> for three people. And when we saw them, we were like, what have we done? <laughs> we're the we're the biggest greediest motherfuckers in the world uh and then you start eating them mm-hmm. and it's just wow it just goes straight down dude Je- japan can't believe custard <sighs> neither can both and they well, well like in america i don't really care about it really but i can't i could not get enough oh man custard i love custard um, it's so surprising it's the I, same goop as mayo i know well but but not but i know I know it's the same exact. No, there's texture. there's sugar. Oh, a texture, but like, for I think that texture in a dessert is okay. Mm, mm. I, I can't cream, explain. you like yeah. cream? I don't mind cream as a thing. I don't like it savory. Okay, I mean, um, I, I like the idea. Cottage cheese grosses me out. It's the grossest thing ever. And it, you know what was really uh, validating for me is the one blooper of Michael Scott eating cottage cheese, and he's like. That, oh my god like he stops yeah. a whole scene it's like okay <laughs> like for I some reason that validated my feelings yeah i can't act right now um, you know what i drank a lot of when i was there was that the high c thing the tent oh. oh shit what does it taste like pokari sweat it tastes like liquid iv but better okay what's what's pokari hokari what is that i don't know some japanese thing okay some like japanese pharmaceutical company made it and it's like an ion replacement drink. It's like it's like liquid IV. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like there's sugar in it, and I don't care. Um, <laughs> I ordered two crates as soon as I got home. Did you really? I can't, I can't live without it now. Wow. It's like it's it's the perfect drink. And they don't have a sugar free. They just don't they have that. Don't, there. No, they definitely yeah. don't have a sugar free. But what's weird is that in Japan, the it says KCAL was like 35, and and this one, I think this one was manufactured in. Uh, oh, it says Japan. Product of Thailand for export only. This one has 123 calories. Makes you think. It does. Uh, what about the omelet? The guy. I didn't get the omelet. Oh. I didn't get the omelet. Bummer. But man, I, I, I ate good all day, every yeah. day. Yeah. I ate every 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to describe I had Wagyu skewers five times a day. Uh, I had... I had I went, there was one of the times where we went to ramen, where we had to wait in line to go in the place. So I got a pork bowl across the street while waiting in line for ramen. <laughs> the pork bowl was so much better than the ramen. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Did you try uh, McDonald's or any uh, fast food stables? We where do we go? I really wanted. I can't believe I'm just now remembering this. I didn't get the fucking kilogram cheese Domino's pizza. Mm. I'm an idiot. Got to go back. I know. Got. I got. I think I got to make it an an annual pilgrimage. Didn't go to Osaka at all. Really? No. But we took we took the bullet train. Which? How fast is it? I mean, it's so fast. But no, <laughs> nothing will make you shake your head at America more than riding the bullet train. Because it's just the most efficient, quiet Dude, thing it's, ever. It's three hundred miles in two hours. What are we doing? We're, the dollar is impenetrable right now. We're a we're a superpower in the world, quote unquote. Quote unquote. And and our transit is a fucking joke. Yeah, there was uh, one of the reasons that the Civil War, like secession, even started was a debate over an a intercontinental rail line going through Chicago or going through. I think it was Atlanta, like start like the major hubs, and and like. It's been unsettled since then. You know what I mean? Like the Civil War. It, it, that was like one of the things where it's like, now we can't have a damn train. You know, like that was one of the things that was like a wow. precursor to discussions about secession. And it's still to this day. And also, it's like, dude, you can take a train from Chicago to Seattle if you want to, if you want to yeah. spend $1,800 and it takes a exactly. week. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and that's, there need, there should be. An efficient high-speed rail system across the entire country. Why does Tesla have a tunnel in Vegas just for Teslas, and there's no fucking train from here to San Francisco? No train from you to San Francisco or from you to Vegas, even. Just for and the I party. guess that's being developed, 
but it, it departs from Rancho Cucamonga. Well, where is that in relation? Two to hours you? away in traffic. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it so it's like, I got to drive two hours to take a drain, two hours to do a four hour drive. <laughs> It's so stupid. It's we're brainless. It's and it's the it's like the biggest proof of oil companies running everything. Yeah, yeah. Where you live, period, is the biggest proof that I've personally ever witnessed of like, oh, if you don't have a car here, you're you're fucked. You're fucked. You are fucked. Yeah. Without the public transport here is a joke. And and you have it. I mean, there are cities that are just like te- think about those Texas highways and the turnoffs and stuff. Well, my mom lived in my mom lived in Dallas for five years, no car. Why is there not an inner? T- well, I guess Texas is planning to secede or something. <laughs> yeah, um, but, here we go. So when they <laughs> yeah, maybe once we get once that happens, we'll get that rail mm. and go Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah. Arkansas. That'll be great. Uh, uh, and then flying, would you watch? Oh, dude. Um, played a lot of video games. Nice. Would you play? So I started... I, I'm still on Vampire Survivor. Oh. It's the easiest thing to I, do two things at once, too. Dude, I literally yeah. played it last night. I'm not like, no they, joke. They, dude, I have billions of hours on it. Yeah. And do I, I found a random chest in a random level and suddenly unlock story mode. What? Yes. I had no idea. Yeah, there's an adventure mode. Holy shit. It's just it's a thing I found in a random level. So cool. It's unbelievable. Who's but your that, guy? So that, Who's your starting guy? What is this weapon? The guy, the throwing knife guy. Throwing knife guy? I like the garlic guy. <laughs> The force field the old guy. Man? He's like the old man, but he's not slow. The other guy's slow. The, uh, I, the garlic is pretty good. I, I like the it. whip. The whip or the knife are my number one. Yeah, yeah. Dude, but dude, how powerful do you feel when you get all them combo weapons? Dude. It's unbelievable. When you it's max out like the holy there. Bible, the Bible one, where she's like, dude, the Bible one's incredible. It's so The scythe that like spins around. Yeah, yeah. The fireball sucks. But you know what? If you max it out and you get to the end, highest damage output is the fireball. I, I, I bet because it's the slowest one and it goes in one direction. That's right. Well, this is a funny episode, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, and then I started the new Yakuza on the plane because I was like, dude, I got to play something Japanese to get fired up. Oh, man. Get you locked in. And it in. was so good that I immediately stopped. Cause you, I'm not going to experience that on a little screen. I, I refuse. Was that on your Steam Deck? It was on the Steam Deck. I, I simply will not yeah. waste, squander... Yeah. That beautiful experience on a tiny screen. You you oh have a lovely God. you have a lovely gaming setup. I that, do. And that I you'll just ex- made it better. Uh, that you'll experience on that. It'll be great. You didn't watch anything or? Oh yeah, no, I watched. I watched. Dude, I watched uh, Missing. Mm-hmm. It's the same team that made Searching with John Cho. Oh okay. But ah uh, fuck, what's her name? She's this. She's Rue's sister in Euphoria. She's the main character. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's the same type of story where it's all takes place on a screen mm-hmm. and it's all shown with like things from screen recordings. Gotcha. Like FaceTime and stuff. And like 10 minutes in the movie, somebody was like, Oh, you're from Hollywood. And she says, I'm from Van Nuys. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> and then I, and I literally, you know, the meme where you see the guy sits forward in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That, I sit forward in my chair and I was, di- I was locked in for the rest of this movie. Missing turned out to be one of the great pieces of Van Nuys media in in, in history. Lo- uh, a great movie. Watch you, Blackberry. Okay. I remember Dude, that. Dude. Yeah. Incredible. You started Shogun? I started Shogun when I got home. Okay. I'm about to, I'm going to start it after this. That's my plan. Amazing pilot. Great. Excellent. Hate every white character. Okay. <laughs> I think that's kind of the idea. Yeah, right. It's just like, yeah, yes, you are you are the villains of history, you know? <laughs> yeah. You were always the pieces of shit, and here you, here it is. Hey, man, there's a reason that every uh, guy in the Empire in Star Wars has a British accent, you know? Damn. Think about it. Legendary bow moment. Did you visit any museums or anything cool? You visited yeah, Nerds, did. which is awesome. Went to Nerds Records? Yeah. Um, That place is incredible. It's it's like the American hardcore hub in Tokyo, which is an insane thing to think about. Yeah. 
Um, cause like disc unions across the street and there you can find age of quarrel first press and stuff like I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, can you talk about the, the almost mistake you made? Oh dude, they had a beware the misfits 12 inch, which I saw that and I was like, Papa has struck gold, baby. <laughs> uh, and I was like, dude, this just sold on this for like 1500 bucks. I'm getting a steal. Yeah. Cause what was it? What and, was it? And then I, I realized I was missing a zero from my calculation of what it costs. And it costs like 1500 bucks. Yeah. I was walking to the register. Like, <laughs> I did it. So you thought it was, does that mean you thought it was 150? I thought it was $150. And I was like, I mean, these fucking chumps yeah. <laughs> don't know what they got. <laughs> I thought I was a rich man that day. And instead I was, they knew what they had. They That's they the had. thing is like. You'll eventually, like, there's a crown of thorns shirt in Disc Union from 96 that's $30. You know, that's that's where you'll be like, oh, shit, I got something cool. Yeah. But things in the thousand range, they know what they got. There and if you go to, like, Shimo Kitazawa, the, like, actual vintage store area. Yeah. They all know what they got. And it's, like, all American stuff, which sucks. You know what's funny is there's no, like, T-shirt Slayer exists, but it, it's not the same as Discogs. No. So it's funny that like a t-shirt can really be worth it's as much it's as worth as much as like anyone's willing to pay. It's with, that's with the like same no with wrestling belts. With no precedent. Oh really? Yes. Interesting. It's, you're, you're, they're only worth what somebody's going to pay for, it, you know? Wow. And then there's a there's a market established by vintage stores and stuff and it is out of control as we've seen. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it's a weird. It's weird. It's bizarre to just think about what things are worth. It's like Alice in Chains stuff, dude. It's is crazy. If you find dirt, like an original pressing of dirt, it's like a three to five hundred dollar record. It's crazy. Was there one pressing or something? I, I, dude, I don't know what it was. I think it might be similar to typo. Like I got an original Bloody Kisses, but it's only it was only printed in Europe. Mm. Like, there was no U.S. printing of it. Interesting. You know? Maybe only the Euro the Roadrunner Europe the the LPs or something something like that. But there's there's uh, the two Alice in Chains shirts. The Alice in Wonderland one mm -hmm. is always like twelve hundred bucks wherever you see it. The the, the one we saw the one that's un we went to a vintage store and they had it the Alice in fucking Chains one. Yes, it was like fifteen hundred bucks. It's <sighs> insane. Who that, is paying that? I have no idea because you don't see them. I've never seen someone never like see them. And whenever I do, it's fifteen hundred dollars, and maybe that's why. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, went to Shibuya, obviously, which is, you know, like Times Square. Um, it's funny to look around and like try and I took, I, so for, I got a Fujifilm X100V camera. Uh, yeah. Yes. So I was, this, and this is, this is like hard lore taught me how to use that. Yeah. You know? Right. I'm sure. Like I've had to become self-sufficient in video enough to make this show for the past two years that mm -hmm. Picking that up was like, oh, this is the same philosophy, uh, which is really fun. And that is cool. Yeah, I had a good time getting <laughs> taking pictures for the first time at 32 years old, because um, it's like solving a little puzzle every time. You know, it's like, what am I looking at? You can look at it. You look through the viewfinder. You go, okay, this looks like shit. <laughs> what do I do to make it not look like shit? And then you twiddle with the things and you learn what they do. Yeah. And then you're like, this doesn't look like shit. Wow. It's a, it's very, very satisfying. Very rewarding. I like that. Photographers are listening to this shaking their it's heads. like, what the fuck are you guys talking Fists about? Fists to the sky, screaming. <laughs> no! Uh, went to Shibuya, Times Square. That's where that's where Nerds is, which is it, like the location is wow. unbelievable. Yeah, that's crazy. I had no idea. All right, It's like one we... block away from Shibuya Crossing. Yeah. Wow. It's insane. Uh, went to Shinjuku, which... Is like Hollywood and Highland type vibe. That's where the Godzilla head is. Yeah, yeah. It's where Tokyo Vice, the best show on TV, takes place. Are you are you a fan? Uh, I I have not started the second season. Oh, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I just started the second season. Okay, it's, it's good. Good. Yeah, I love they, the first the, season. First season is love fucking it. unreal, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Uh, went to uh, what is it? Akihabara. The the like arcade zone, arcade oh, district, fuck like the yeah, like dude. anime zone, where it's just like this building is owned by Sega. <laughs> dude, the like, Sega buildings are all something else now. No, <laughs> yeah, they were purchased by something called Gigo. Dude, COVID, dude, get into the gaming oasis. 
Okay, that's kind of sick. <laughs> that's kind of dope. I'm trying to gigo for sure, dude. Straight up, 100%. I got to get into that gaming oasis. Dude, the drum game, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the big drum game. That's the best game of all time. It is... It, 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 there is zero learning. It's not like Guitar Hero. There's like no learning curve. Hit this. Yeah. Eventually, you'll be able to do it on medium. Eventually, you'll be able to do it on yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, don't be surprised if one day we start firing a, a show, an episode opens and you just see in the background the full size cabinet for the, the drum game. <laughs> I need it. It's so fun. It's so fucking fun. Uh, uh, damn. You had a fucking, like for 10 days, you packed in so much. I packed it in. The Kyoto day was a four-hour round trip on a train and like did it straight from, I think we got there at 9 a.m., hired a guy named uh, Kosuke, Kosuke to just drive us around all day. And everything's pretty spread out there. Wow. So we saw like one of the oldest shrines in Japan where they used to do in the like 1300s, they did an archery competition. Yeah, for 24 hours. Whoa! And women frequently won. Really? Yeah. Where it was, you have to fire an arrow every 10 seconds for 24 hours. Holy shit! Yeah, and the winner would get these like crazy ornate paintings, and they had all the paintings up of like every single one the winners won from the 1300s. It's crazy to think that Europe was experiencing the plague. And that's what's going on in, in Kyoto. I think the Spanish flu hit it hard. Oh, okay. Which I mean, that might have been that might have been I way think it's later. Way later, yeah. Way later, but the there's one of the like Buddhist deities. So this is uh, this temple has a, is the only temple with a thousand Buddhas in it. Okay. There's a thousand carved Buddhas that were built by seventy sculpt uh, sculptors over ninety years. Holy shit. And they like, imagine just being like to, 17. <laughs> like, yeah. That's your life. Yeah. Holy you know, shit. like you're, and then your son is born and you teach him to sculpt so he can keep doing it. Oh, wow. Crazy. There's a thing yeah. you can't take pictures in there. Okay. Um, unbelievable place. And then they talk about one of the deities that like became popular in Japan during the Spanish flu. Oh, because she's like the deity of mercy. And they were like, we need some, we, yeah. we need to be saved. Yeah. Uh, so like ever when you see her, you like rub her or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that place was fucking magical. Did you uh, experience a cold brew in Kyoto? Okay, dude. Cold brew is not really a thing. It's crazy. It's sad. I I told our guide that Kyoto was invented in cold brew. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> He was, he was like, wait, 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 say, say what you just said again. <laughs> I told, did I say it backwards <laughs> yeah. that Kyoto was invented in cold brew? <laughs> um, I told our guide, I was like, do you have, do you know a place with good cold brew? And he was like, what the fuck is cold brew? And I was like, it was invented in Kyoto. And he was like, <laughs> cause he was born and raised in Kyoto. So I think he was psyched oh, to have a new shit. fact. Yeah. The whole, tell. the drip thing is called like the Kyoto styled fuck. Damn yeah. it. But in Shino Kitazawa, Bear Pond Espresso? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest cups I've ever had. Mm. Um, and then in Harajuku, went to Coffee Mamea, which mm -hmm. has no signage whatsoever. Love, love it. It's a shack in a neighborhood. Yeah. And you go in and then you're suddenly in like a lab. Yes. And you only know that it's there because there's a line out the door. Beautiful. And there's three guys standing there just like, the what, can I, what can I like offer you? And they want you to take your time and test everything. Really? And there's a hot and a cold version of like <sighs> almost everything. There's a, there's a pre-brewed cold brew version of every bean. <laughs> yeah, it's just. And that was great. That was like a, like a, what, are, what are the wine people called? Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, tasting? Yeah. But, the, but like, what's the thing? Sommelier. Some, oh, you know? Sommelier. Yeah, it was sure. like a coffee sommelier experience. Unbelievable. It was fucked, dude. Were you <laughs> were you jacked up? Oh, my God. Yeah, I had I had two and then got one. Lana was at this place called Kitty Land. Yeah. <laughs> which is a five-floor toy store that's like you walk in and it's like calico critters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Downstairs is called Snoopy World. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> she lost it down there. Oh, I lost a fortune. Uh, <laughs> upstairs <laughs> is Pokemon, Ultraman, and stuff like that. Fuck and then yeah. some other stuff. Um, so, yeah, I lost my ass there. Uh, but I brought hers back, and she took one step, and she was like, this is too this is disgusting but she's like a latte chick you know? yeah, yeah yeah which so am i to be honest um and i don't I discriminate that one too I, I don't discriminate except for uh lavender i don't want lavender in any. i don't want that get flowers out of my yeah. beverage yeah I'm, I'm good you know give me and, a, tr- a chocolate bean you yeah, know yeah it kind of extends to matcha too i'm not huge on matcha i don't yeah, hate I didn't it. do a single i didn't do a single matcha treat yeah i won't do it yeah we don't need but it. dude, Zuma said something really wise about tea when we were Ooh, at dinner. Hit me. He said, he was like, I coffee, I don't like coffee. Tea is better because even when it's bad, it's just water in a packet. Where he was like, you can't fuck up tea. Fucked up coffee is, is crazy, he said. I don't know if we've stressed enough how fucked up my body is right now. <laughs> From, or why my eyes would still have black makeup on? No, I was getting, I was going to get to it. I'm talking oh, okay. about your flight home going straight to Jack. Jeez. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I guess yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, um, <laughs> my body yeah. is so fucked up. I'm so fucked up. But as as a, as a wise man named Zuma once said, I'm entertainer. <laughs> so here I am, dude. Sweet treats. Oh. The fucking uh, first of all, the cone, the waffle cone sandwich thing at Seven Eleven. That is the perfect packaged treat i had one every night yeah we got home from wherever we're going hit the 7-eleven across the street from the b asakusa Ugh. and ate one into a coma every night dude here's the thing you will not believe we got there went to bed at 10 p.m yeah woke up at seven zero jet lag ever at all are you serious Getting there, we were we were locked the fuck in day one. So did you stay up the whole flight? Like, what was the move? Stayed up the whole flight, yeah. which which had to, right? You know, from had LA, to. that's not impossible. No, it was twelve hours. It's tough. And we left at five p.m. Yeah, that's that's tough. I can't sleep on planes, yeah, no same. matter what. Same. So it wasn't as challenging for me, especially because I had vampire survivors. <laughs> I started Yakuza. Uh, I'll tell you what I did. What's that? I rewatched The Irishman. Oh boy, it's fucking awesome, man. I don't. I, I I'm gonna. I need to revisit and um try and not focus. I still just hate the the bang bang thing and the. Fucking- There's though, but that and the kick at the grocery store are really the only two things I didn't. I you could say are bad about it. Yeah, and you know what? I think it was so jarring at the time. I couldn't. I hyperfixated, dude. Because the movie, right, is so fucking good. I really liked the Sebastian Maniscalco part. Yes, I, I, Pacino like, I, as I re- Jimmy Hoffa. Pacino is unreal, and fucking Pesci's amazing. Rem- I still wish we got just one three way conversation between the three of them. I know, just a little fan service, you know. I know. But whatever. Ray I Romano as the lawyer is unbelievable. Yeah. And fucking, I, I always forget his name. He's an, uh, an English guy. He plays Capone in Boardwalk Empire. He's in This Is England. He's the, he's the, he plays uh, the, the guy in Miami in The Irishman, who's late. And there are Oh, yeah, the, the guy that beats, him, beats up Jimmy Hoffa in jail. That guy. He's great in it. He's great in everything. That guy's unbelievable. I forget his name every time. He's super British. All right, I need to revisit. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but I, I can't say enough good things about Japan, just the experience overall. And you um, saw Koba, I saw? So, yeah, I ran into Koba at Nerds. I told him I was going there. They, bo- they both came. Beautiful. beautiful. The way that hardcore has established this thing between cultures and, and countries around the world is, is like, it's truly insane that I can go to the furthest place in the world and text three guys and be like, "Hey, can I meet you at this record store?" And they're like, "Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah." It's it's a beautiful thing, man. I I, I don't I I'm so grateful for for music for just giving me that because you tell that to your coworker, yeah, and they're like, or some person around town, and they can't believe it. But it's just that's the standard fare for what we do. Me, your coworker, your my coworker one. Bo. <laughs> I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> my, uh, old, so, my my last coworker. So when you <laughs> 
when you flew home, yeah, were you as locked in, like jet lag wise, dude? Yeah, uh, flying home is this. always way harder. Way yeah. harder. Way harder because you lose the time, and you get home essentially when you left. Right. You know. Yeah. You just skipped a day. So I was awake for like. 30 hours by the time i should have gone i went to bed first night dude i was home for one night you know yeah <laughs> um went to bed at 9 p.m woke up at 7 a.m i was like i'm back i did it i've done it i achieved the impossible yeah went to the gym had twitching tongues practice went hiking whoa 10 p.m hit i'm wired Oh shit. I got a I got a fifth wind. I'm fucked. My my modem suddenly dies. No. I, I'm leaving town the next day. My wife has work. Yeah. I've got to get do, It is unbelievable how much society has to rely on just having internet at this oh, point. Dude. And how little you can do when it doesn't work. When it goes out, they can't help you at night. And, and then the next day, they send a guy who's like, yeah, this is a bigger problem. It's going to take two weeks to fix. So here we are hoping that my fucking internet doesn't go out. Oh, it's a miracle shit. Okay. that it hasn't. Okay, cool. Um, and then I have a flight the next morning. I don't sleep. I haven't, I've, haven't really slept yet before and <laughs> since getting home Dude, from you, Japan the one night. That one good night of sleep, that was your in-the-air sleep. It was. You're, you're behind. You're Which trailing. is fake. Yeah, I'm I'm two days of sleep behind. Behind. You're trailing an airplane right it's now. It's the same thing that happened to me in the UK when we were there. Remember, I slept the one night. Yeah. Too good. <laughs> I went to bed at, at like 10 p.m. the one night in the UK, woke up at 2 p.m. And I was even more fucked. Oh. Traveling. I don't know how to do it. It's it's. You know, I can't even, what can I say? I still have nightmares about when I overslept when we were in England. That was the, the, crazy. The other day, I had a nightmare about it. Literally, while you were in Japan, I had a nightmare about oversleeping and you were waiting on waiting on me. Turned over and looked at my clock and it was like 7.45 in the morning. Like, <laughs> and, I, and I... And we weren't working. Uh, no, I, I'm home. Alo <laughs> I'm totally home alone. I, w I woke up, looked at the clock, and I literally, this loud, I went... <laughs> Went back to sleep. A miracle. A, a bonus <sighs> miracle. My God. Yeah, I don't like that. That was... Uh... <laughs> that, yeah, I know. that was awesome. Hasn't happened since. It hasn't happened since. You've been a good boy. And right. then you... I will say, people don't... You get ready so fast. Dude, I can get ready. I can get showered and ready in 15 minutes. It's pretty It's pretty unbelievable. No problem. You're, you you rally like, no, like nobody yeah. I've ever seen yeah. before. Whereas uh, traveling with Mike Cesario, the man needs, he goes for five more minutes, five more minutes, and then 15 <laughs> minutes go by. <laughs> but it's, it's the best. Um, so, tell me about Jag. So went to Jag yesterday, which is just another gig festival in Tacoma, Tacoma. which is the, 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 their replacement. So Rainfest was top three fests in the country as it was going on, you know? Yeah. It was the Northwest's preeminent hardcore festival. <laughs> Um, to the point where <clears throat> it was like, damn, maybe we shouldn't tour there just in case we play Rainfest. So I think in some ways, a festival can hurt certain regions. Definitely, dude. And I think since Rainfest has gone away, Northwest has gotten so strong on its own. Mm. Like their scene is thriving because of their bands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's always, always, always the best thing. Texas, it's always the same. Mm -hmm. Florida, Florida, it's always the same. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. The places where it's hard to get to, yeah. they lean on each other and they start all these bands together and they go off for each other's bands. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. And that, dude, that always gets me because California is so. Uh, kind of neglects its own bands yeah. at first. Like a young California band will take a long time to get over. Sometimes mm -hmm. never does. Mm -hmm. But like California will hear like, oh, this band from Massachusetts is coming? 600 tickets sold. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah. Which is nice because it's like, oh, they're not from here. We got to support them. Meanwhile, there's a show every night 
And that's not, maybe the problem. Not dissimilar from Chicago at all until very recently. Right. The new, like within the last couple of years, really post COVID, uh, boy, when I go to shows, like I don't, I am the oldest guy there except right. for like Shane, like who booked the show, yeah. you know, it's like, which is both a bad feeling and the best feeling ever. Yeah. Fully agree. hundred percent of like, I'm so glad this many new people are here. And I, what was nice was seeing people I recognized from Rainfest at Jag was like, Oh, these are the people that have been coming oh. the whole time. Yeah. And a sea of people I'd never seen before. Yeah. Really That's cool. Amazing. They've got a really special thing going. I was killing time. That's the best band ever. They're the best band ever. That's the best band of all time. And that's one of their first out of state things, no? Because dude didn't want to fly. I guess, yeah. Like that that was what I heard. So that's That's really special. It's kind of crazy, yeah. yeah. And then more importantly, how are the Jokers? How'd my boys do? Oh, they killed it. <laughs> did, I got we got there. So our we flew day up because it was like guys, I cannot Yeah, I can't go the night before. I can't I physically can't get in a day early. Like yeah. I literally couldn't. Um got in uh drove straight to the show got there pretty much as they started oh nice which was which was amazing just walking in and yeah. uh they killed it it was great um, yeah. cosmic joke hardware records oh oh one out now <laughs> i don't know if there's any lps left but if there are pick up one now yeah uh also Athletic Greens. This episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Boy, let me tell you something. And this is this is a ringing endorsement. I started with a personal trainer a week ago. Oh. In the meal plan and all the stuff he was telling me about, he's like, I want you to do this, this, and this. Make sure you get yourself a powdered green. I recommend AG1. <laughs> he said that? I swear to God, it's in the thing. And I said, guess what? Guess what I already have? I'm Locked on it. in. Locked. <laughs> and if you need it, <laughs> go to athleticgreens.com slash hardlore. To get all the daily vitamins, mm -hmm. probiotics, prebiotics mm -hmm. that your body needs, that your body's been missing your whole life. I drink it every single morning. I had travel packs with me in Japan, oh. in Seattle. Everywhere I go, I'm traveling greened up. Yeah, absolutely. They were looking at me like a psycho while I was on the train sipping my greens. <laughs> but I didn't care because I knew that meant I could eat dumplings and noodles and mochi and and did you get sick no i'm great sneezed Stop. a couple of times but that's you know well, I, that's... I was touching monkeys <laughs> what, what, what do you want from me uh, athletic greens a life-changing supp uh, supplement here mm -hmm. and it's just one little scoop of green powder 12 to 16 ounces of water mm -hmm. once a day you can take it with your protein you can take it with uh collagen that also if you use our code you get a year supply of the vitamin d and k drops Put a couple drops in your drink as well. Get it all at once. Boom. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This episode is also brought to you by Manscaped. <sighs> Switch. Walking 10 miles a day in Japan. My crop needs revival. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And preservation. <laughs> and cleansing. So thank God I have the crop preserver, the crop, <laughs> crop preserver, the crop reviver, and the crop cleanser mm. to keep me alive. I use a Manscaped product every single day, whether every it be for, for hair trimming, uh, beard trimming, yeah, skin washing, <laughs> what, yeah. whatever it is. I use it every single day. If you smell my body close enough in some capacity, mm -hmm. if you scan the whole thing, eventually you'll be like, ah, there, it is. There, there, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> that Manscaped. So try go to, hard, go to Code Harbor. 20% <laughs> off and free shipping. Manscaped. You hey, won't believe it. It's yeah, what's coming up? Father's Day is coming up soon. Is it? Yeah, I'll see eventually. Easter <laughs> is Easter. Father's Day. Yeah. And it's coming up, and you got code hard lore. You get get your eggs cleaned for Easter <laughs> <laughs> with the crop preserver. You can't Escape keep your getting eggs, away with you this. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Manscaped. Back to the episode. Hey, Bo. Wow, that was a great. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm tired. Oh, it's good. Jag was incredible. So Jag coincided uh, at the same... We played at the exact same time. I couldn't believe it. As Sting's last match ever. I could not believe that. I texted Colin, hey, the um, the hoodie looks good. He said, thanks. I said, 
the montage before Sting's match just killed me. And all he sent me back was this picture. <laughs> and I immediately under, and, and then he said about to play immediately understood the predicament. Couldn't believe you had to do that. The fact that, I mean, it was sad to miss it, you know? Yeah. In real time. Yeah. He's my favorite wrestler of all time. It's something I've been preaching for years now that he's the goat. Yeah. Um, you, but, you, know, you might be truly one of the only people who the whole time who the whole time going, has always been championing Sting. Actually, Sting's been my guy, man. So in a so let me let me ask you: try to be as objective as you can and not sure. not stick to your favorite from childhood because I get that. Sure. Undertaker, Sting, Sting. 100%. Can you give, can you give me three reasons why? Absolutely, I think. Uh, Sting's transformation, uh, story-wise, was one of the one of the greatest wrestling stories ever told. Because it was, I don't need WCW. I'm, it was, I'm my it own was, shit. It was you think I've betrayed this thing I've been loyal to this whole time, right? And then, so in the War Games match, yeah, he's supposed to be in it. He comes in, death drops everybody, leaves, <sighs> says "fuck you." <laughs> you you question my loyalty. I, then you like you don't deserve me. Yeah, and that's when he goes starts going to the rafters. Oh, eighteen months. Eighteen months, dude. Guy just, doesn't just wrestle. Selling out arenas by staring out from rafters. Unbelievable. And that was when I was like, when I was a boy, I was like, Sting's my favorite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that got me. I I was fully in. I mean, if the crow is <laughs> a child, obviously a childhood favorite of both of ours. Mm. And seeing a wrestler who is dressed like the crow but acting like Batman. Wow. There's nothing ever in entertainment history as cool as that. Okay. I'll count that as two points. That's great. You know? Also, the moveset, the swagger. This I mean, even before Crow Sting. Yeah. yeah Surfer yeah. Sting was so the so guy. So cool. So cool. I tweeted about the other day. I think fucking uh bomber jacket sting unreal having the wherewithal Which, to like stay covered up wear your t-shirt you know like not look like rick flair yeah to like you still look fucking menacing and cool come on which i think yeah uh, and i might be wrong here but i think bomber jacket sting was at the very least encouraged by if yeah. not a brody king idea he when i tweeted about it he told me that I think it was his idea and Emily did the makeup at the time. So there you go. And Emily is one of Emily Blavelt. Yes. The wife of Brody King. One of the only other people to do Sting's face paint ever. Really? He did it himself his entire career. That's so fucking sick. Which but, I was so inspired by that. I tried to do it myself. Yeah. Oh, dog shit. The worst thing you ever seen. It looks pretty good. But no, I, I didn't do that. I didn't oh, do that one. Oh, who did that? Uh, Sabrina, okay. Sabrina, the pigeon gave the pigeons <laughs> okay. lovely girlfriend. Uh, um, she killed it. I saw her makeup and I said, you look like you're good at makeup. You want to do something for me? <laughs> that's awesome. I will say another thing that he has that taker doesn't is like being that age and that late in your career and listening to the younger people of like, Oh, I should do that. Yeah. That sounds good. And not only that, not only listening, but like, listening to what the audience likes and adapting. Yeah. Doing these, he does the, he, the past, all 30 matches in his career, other than the glass thing last night. Yeah. He had the craziest moment in every match. Yes. He did something where it was like, that was the craziest. Like, how old is this guy? Yeah, how old is this guy? Yeah. Also, yeah, he's my, yeah. But one final point. He doesn't have a fucking crown jewel match. He doesn't Damn have right. a Roman Reigns Damn. Or a Goldberg right. match. You know what I mean? He 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 went out. He didn't take like, the blood money. There's yeah, and there's no like flop. Like there's yeah. no he got hurt with Seth Rollins and then left. And like that was And it. then was like, Oh, you're not gonna let me go? Okay. You're I mean, gonna I, let me wrestle, I'm gonna find a way. Yeah, I'm gonna find a way. So I think I might be convinced. I think Taker is Taker is like a little more flashy and immediate. Yeah. For me, you know? Taker has some of the greatest matches ever. Yeah. He's one of the greatest characters ever. Yeah. Um, I'm not really going to argue if somebody is like, I like Undertaker more. I think it's better. 
Yeah. Because I get it. Yeah. You know, they served similar purposes in opposite companies. I liked Sting's presentation yeah. more. And obviously, he's the best guy ever. It seems. Yeah, right. N- nary a, a bad word to say about him from anyone. Yep. That's pretty. Those say, those say to Colin from Sting. It's right true. there. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Thank you, Brody. Thank you, Brody King. Uh, so that's my favorite wrestler. So I paid tribute to him in my own little way. And you came out f- to his music, his OG crow, th- crow theme. Do you know about his entrance yet? Last night? No, I've only seen a little clip of the movie. Oh, okay. Perfect. I'm not going to say a word. Which looked amazing. I want you to. Here's a little hard lore for you. Yes. Listen to the crow sting theme and listen to a little song called Disharmony. <laughs> and you tell me what you hear. Anyway, the Jag set uh, was incredible. Had the best time. Haven't played Seattle since Bane's first last tour. Uh, <laughs> the first time Bane did a last tour was <laughs> the last the, time we played Seattle. The calculation meme right They're now. They're back just... now, but the first time that it was the last time was when <laughs> we last played there. Uh, and it kind of sucked. But this, this set was like, it felt like... Uh, it was like ah, finally, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it awesome. felt like everybody that's ar- that's already seen us and been there the whole time going, no, we like this band, and all the new people that really getting it. It was very special. I appreciate Zach and everybody else involved for having us. Again, really proud of them for this thing they put together. We got a little viral moment going around out of it. Oh, that's that's the that's promoter Zach. of the show. That's the promoter of the show doing like the gnarliest stage dive, the coolest dive possible. Yeah, yeah. Loving that. I think I'm cursed a little bit in the microphone department. The same thing happened as FYA. Like, Where I pick up the microphone, I me- say something, somebody goes across, my cord gets ripped out. Dude, tape that motherfucker like Roger Daltrey. I know. Tape, tape I got. I think. I, I think it's the mic that I use. Oh, maybe it doesn't catch. I like don't the think others. it catches well. Tape um, it. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to start go back to a 58. Go back to a know? 58. Yeah, for sure. Because the 58s can take the beating, that, of the hardcore beating that I don't think any other mic is designed to be, take. Dude, you ever like you ever look at like the house mics at Gilman and they're just like flat? They're flat. <laughs> they're disgusting. They look like a human brain. And somehow sound the sound uh, perfect. Great. Yeah, of course. There's a couple mics in the world I'm going to try out soon. We'll see if they can get them to give them to me. If you know, mm. what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm cursed there. I had mic problems the whole set, and there's just a guy running around on stage like fixing things the whole time, which yeah. is the worst. That's the worst. Yeah. But they're trying, and it's like you can't get mad at them. But then they hand you a microphone, and then you sing it to it, and you don't hear anything. And what can you do? Yeah. I mean, um, hey, that's that's Hollywood, baby. <laughs> man, it's, that's showbiz. But then the people keep going off and then you don't yeah. really care. And then that's kind then of you, uh, a unique thing about hardcore, too, that I know we've kind of brushed upon. But it's like it, it's like with, with uh, uh, cruelty at Sound and Fury when he was having issues and Michael was like, hey, and like told people like. This is, and they, this and is wh- why this there's is there's a universal understanding of like, yeah. there's they might, that band might not be having a good time. We have to save them. Yeah. Whereas and they always do. It's beautiful. normie. Yeah. Normies go to a show and there's like a problem and it's like, um, that band sucked. They had nah. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Um, yeah, and then you just got home from the trip from that show. I got like home like a few hours. hours ago. Oh my God. This man. I haven't, I haven't rested yet. I don't think I can for quite a while. Got to get this out. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so to answer anyone's questions, that's why it looks like Colin has uh, eyeliner on. The, yeah, eyeliner he was, on. Sting. I was doing was sting. sting. Well, while you were away, you know, I did some traveling. Where'd you go? I had a, I had a noodle or two, you know. Did I can you? Do, I can do foreign. I can do exotic things here. No, I didn't, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. Oh. Uh, I saw Lamb of God and Pantera in How Green, was that? Green Bay. It was genuinely awesome. Lamb really? of God was like fucking sick. And Pantera did everything you want. 
Really? So they didn't, I'll just say they did not play Suicide No Part 1, but they did two rocks. They did not play all of Domination, but they did the breakdown like on the did live the, record. Did the breakdown, right. Um, and they didn't touch Cemetery Gates in any way. That's the only one where I was like, ah. Really? No, they didn't even like, not even a montage or anything. No Cemetery Gates. But they played Floods all the way. Yeah, that's wild. They played. Ow, 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 yeah. ow, ow, ow. That's one of the best breakdowns of all time. And, ow, 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 ow. and I'll say this. Obviously, anyone who would be going to that would know that uh, Zach was going to kill it. He was, he was like always the guy. Like there are videos of him walking on stage with a dog, giving the leash to Dimebag. Dimebag gives Zach his guitar and he rips the solo. Like he was always the guy. Yeah. The chosen one. He played every, cause like the cool thing about Pantera to me is like all of Dimebag solos, you can hum. They're that right. memorable that you know all the parts. He played them all pitch perfect. He didn't, he didn't, squib a note right the and I, only I, thing he didn't do and this is just me being a dimebag fanboy is during the walk solo there's the do didn't do didn't do didn't didn't either dimebag uses two different hands to do the and he, didn't do it? he didn't do that it's the only oh he just did one he just did there, i mean there's a certain sauce that the that those brothers had like the like Vinny with his kick drum dude could lead with both feet oh really that's how the becoming intro thing is possible because it goes yeah. which requires right left right oh to lead so it's like such a fucked up pattern but even doing it right now is like dude primal Concrete sledge. Doing this counting, but how did how is that good? On your on your essentially your first LP. Yeah. Like how the fuck did you do that? I don't know, man. But yeah, how did they do any of that? That was awesome. It was hilarious because it was in northern Wisconsin. It was a room of the most polite drunk Hesher metal assuredly like you know sketchy that's shocking oh, and they yeah. were all just like oh sorry about that but like everyone was so fucking nice <laughs> everyone was so cool so that was cool sorry about that pal see kyle yeah <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> just just absolutely un uh, without a doubt some of the worst people in history attending that respectfully that's crazy but, but yeah but nary a problem Wow, no. that's yeah, shocking. It was, it was wild, but that's Wisconsin. They're the most polite, uh, except for when the when the Packers are playing, huh? Yeah, apparently. I don't know. That's that's then they become animals. Football bow is starting this year. It's that era. It's my you're into bow now. You're I, into I, football. I'm really into bow now, dude. I love Sleepy Colin. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> you want to hit the Discord? You want to hit some questions? Yeah, we got some questions here. We're Before we do that, Bo, let me, I mean, I'll, I guarantee somebody in here will probably ask about sweet treats and, and then I can go into detail about the sweet oh. potato creme brulee. Oh, Jesus. God. I forgot. I can't believe I forgot. The same place made the ube, the shredded like spaghetti ube thing over yes. ice cream. Yes. And that is the craziest thing I've ever eaten. It's <sighs> fucked up. <laughs> the place is unbelievable. All right. We got, uh, we got questions from the dis Discord here. Join the Discord Tor if you haven't already. Join yeah. it. We're like 105 people away from 3,000 members. Wow. And this is where we do this. This is where we do this. It's And, and moving forward, I'm predicting by the end of this year, it's going to be real important. So you're going to want to get in there. It'll be really important. I think within the next month when the Patreon starts, <laughs> that'll still... I mean, this thing, what we're doing right now, the Q&A stuff, will be happening kind of exclusively on Patreon. Mm-hmm. And it'll be it'll be all Discord based. All through Discord. Top, this first question: top three best qualities about each other. You want to go first, Bo? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so nice. I'm gonna clip this whole thing and play it to you when I piss you off. Um, let's see, Colin, you you're a fucking ever flowing spring, like an ever flowing stream. <laughs> some may say of creativity. 
Like you, the ideas that come out of you in your various outlets are actually unbelievable. It's like inspiring. It's intimidating. But yeah, the, just the way that like you're always able to put out music for various bands, merch for various bands, merch for uh, this pro like whatever. Like it's the amount of plates you got going is crazy. <sighs> Too damn uh, You love uh, even during a high stress moment, you can you can have a laugh. I I admire that in anyone. I think that's a really important thing. I don't. It, mm. It's important to me personally. And uh, you are, are just such a good. Uh, dad to your pups. Oh, that I admire funny. I admire that in a person too. You know what's funny is I don't I don't like talk about them all the time, which is interesting because not, they're pretty not much, on the show. No, but they're pretty much like the only thing I think about. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. my life revolves around them. And I barely talk about them. That's private, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love those fuckers. Uh Bo. Bo, you this is so uncomfortable immediately. <laughs> no, it's great. You're going to have to listen. Like I said earlier, when we're out and about and we're traveling and stuff, everything is kind of just happening when it's happening. Mm -hmm. We have, there's no, we have no idea what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you're always just like, okay, sounds good. If there's ever a problem, it's okay. Sounds good. Whatever works. Uh, very easy to work with. And, mm -hmm. the, and it's things like this where we can sit here and talk for two hours and then we wrap and go, man, that was easy. Yeah. And then in the comments, it'll be like best episode. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that always feels good. Cause that's just us. And that's what well, that what's better than that. Mm. This is very good. What else do I like about Bo? Um, every time, every single time I've said, Bo, would you try this ranch or this mayonnaise again? Just to see if you like it. You always say yes. I know you don't like it. I know you won't like it. And you always do it just because just because you want me to be happy. I also I I I respect food. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I respect the the chemistry that is making a bite, you know? Of course. I want to try what what is intended. I really, truly, I wanna like everything, but some things you just don't like. I I also think you are highly intelligent in a way that I am not. Your historical anecdotes that come out are always at such unbelievable timings when I'm like, I want to know more about this thing. You're like, ding. <laughs> Actually, Paul Revere was kind of a scumbag. It's true. He died a drunk. He died penny. <laughs> he died penniless as a drunk. That is true. What are the odds? That is 100% true. So yeah, that's the fun. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, favorite food you tried in Japan? There it is. It is. Look at that. It's the second question. The pancake was fucked. It was unbelievable. Look at these photos I took. God, they're so fluffy. They're so fluffy. It's so they're hateful. so fluffy. <laughs> and then the sweet potato creme brulee was like, me and Brittany would get back to the hotel every day and be like, okay, tomorrow we got to go back. And and like, like every, people would be trying to plan stuff and we'd be like, hang on. We need the sweet potato creme brulee before we can do any of that. How many of them did you eat total? I ate three of them. Okay. Three so of describe, them in 10 days. So you had the crack of the sugar. I saw okay, the video. So the, the sweet potato creme brulee is, they grow these sweet potatoes just for this. Okay. So they're sweetened from the moment they're grown. Oh. They're like fertilized sweet. So that when they bake them, the, the custard and the sugar aside, yeah. you get into the potato itself with the custard and yeah. it's sweet too. So you, you peel so you, off the skin and it's sweet too. So you're actually eating. It's not just used for the shell. You're oh, actually you're carving eating. carving that some bitch. Wow. Crazy, dude. Wow. Because like, you know, sometimes you'll go to a steakhouse and you'll get a baked potato and it'll be like a twice baked potato. And you can kind of tell that this shell was from like a few days ago, but yeah. the, the mix was made maybe more Give me recently. the cheese and the innards and then I'm getting out of there. You yeah, know? you know. With it, this sweet potato creme brulee thing, you could straight up. You could just eat it. <laughs> you could eat it whole. Whoa. That was probably the best thing. And the, the pancakes. Pancakes were crazy. Crazy that it was, it was sweet treats in a place that I wouldn't automatically associate with sweet. You know, because they're the, the country is so fat phobic that you wouldn't think that, mm -mm. but there are sweet treats everywhere all the time and they're all good. 
Fuck. It sucks. It's, it's the perfect place. It's the best place ever. The fucking <laughs> coffee drink, uh, coffee vending machines on every corner. Oh, dude, we didn't even talk about the warm vending machines. Yeah, the Boss Rainbow. Mm-hmm. It was 35 degrees out the whole time. So I'm freezing my nuts off, pouring rain, drinking a hot cup of coffee every corner of yeah. every street. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the fucking lack of trash cans there is pretty brutal. There's also not a paper towel in sight. Really? Bathrooms all have the electric dryers. Sure. Which at first was frustrating, you know? Yeah. And in America, when a place doesn't have paper towels, it's kind of like, buddy, you're not saving anything with yeah. this electric dryer. I'm yeah. going to use your napkins. <laughs> <laughs> but but Japan, universally getting rid of them, like has reduced waste. That has made a like crazy impact on the world w- waste and the, on the just the like Their ecological output. waste yeah. issue in Japan. Yeah. Um, so to the, when they do something, they're like, "Yeah, we're going to completely change this, and it's going to work." Yeah, right. And they don't just uh, they don't just ban straws. No, they're and they're psycho about separating recycling and trash. Right, and you're like. What we learned eventually was that you could should kind of carry a tote bag and carry your own trash around. for your own trash. Yeah, that's and that's it's funny because Mac tweeted about it and I responded and was like, "Yeah, you carry it with your shame. Like that's yeah. it, hundred percent." Which you have it waste. also. I'm big and greedy, so I'm the whole time I'm sucking down drinks every corner, mm. pissing myself left and right, drinking mm. Pocari sweat all the time, carrying three to four bottles at all times, like a scumbag. Like it is kind of. I don't know. They could have a, a, every major intersection could definitely have a nice. Put a fucking trash can. Put there. a garbage but can. But also, come on. when you get rid of it like that, it actually does something. So where would you get rid of it? The hotel. The hotel. Yeah. It's like, that's the thing is you are supposed to discard your waste personally. Like you're, it's your waste. It's pretty impressive. The it whole is, country is impressive. It's going somewhere. You know, The whole country is impressive. And that's, yeah. that's the craziest thing. Cause like, we nuked them twice. Yeah. Yeah. They were, and, they were. and their society smokes ours. Mm. Everything about it, walking around, everybody is so respectful. Mm. Um, like we never had an issue anywhere for yeah. any second. And they're it, so understanding. Did you ever feel unsafe even for a never moment? for a second? And it's like, you're in one of the largest metropolises on the planet, on the planet, the, the, like one of the main ultimate travel destinations in the world. Yeah, and they they are so psyched to have you there, or so I, you I, think. You know? I think the number one destination is Paris, in which there are many places they I fucking hate you, and I wouldn't want to walk alone. No, and no, it's, not, it's like not a safe place. Yeah, <laughs> you know, not so in Tokyo. Tokyo is the goat. Dude. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go back. Let's see. When will Harm's Way re-release the Fourth Crusade rip? That's a funny question. Oh, that is a funny question. Never. Never. So get you one. I have a medium. Yeah. If whoever asked that is a medium, let me know. Somebody gave it to me <laughs> in St. Go. Louis recently. I can't wear it. Yeah, they got. Uh, you, can, you don't want to talk we, about it? we were asked not to sell it and to donate any money made from it, which we did. And we respectfully like stopped selling it. Yeah, that's really all. All I want to say. Which is really interesting to me when they were really supportive of In Love There Is No Law. Which is like... That just took the title. I changed yeah, one you, word. You took the you title. Know? Yeah. yeah. And I they were like, that's awesome, lads. Good on you. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe... I mean, the, to their credit, they are always like... They're infamously... DIY. Would, would, very DIY would destroy merch after tours that wasn't purchased so that it couldn't be scalped and resold it fucking when was the the last tour that they did 2013 shirts were 10 bucks shirts were 10 and 15 dollars depending on color unreal so like to their credit they're protecting something yeah i fully i I have no issue i just think in metal there's like tom gabriel warrior from celtic frost had the had a whole thing had a, a meltdown when cruelty did a celtic frost rip they think that ripoffs are plagiarism right. when they're tributes. It's the the highest honor. It's the highest. Th- it's weird. It's the utmost respect. It's yeah. truly the utmost respect. Yeah. yeah. We also 
did that. Th- there were four UK dates. The first outbreak was one of them uh, on that tour where we had that shirt and we introed with the fourth crusade intro out of pure fucking love. So, but you know, t- Hey, we're respectful young men and we did what was asked and so be it. I, 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 I've made my peace with it. Good. And was in the fucking pit in 2013 when they See? played here. Oh so, my uh, God. Who fucking cares? Those are the, that's the best live set I've ever seen. Uh, UK Twitching Tongue shows when? Don't know. We were asked about one and communications fell apart. Mm. I'm sure it'll happen within mm-hmm. the next year or so. <laughs> Uh, three top three ways to get out of your head when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. That's funny. Uh, uh top three. What top do you three? do when you're stressed, Colin? You go to the gym. I know that. And I just, uh, try to like compartmentalize all the things I'm stressed about. Yeah. Generally when I'm stressed, it's because of like two things I have to do at the same time. Yes. Right. Which Dude, As some, scheduling conflicts over booking yourself is like, <laughs> it's a nightmare. The, 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 the Kale Sane syndrome, I dude, call it. Um, <laughs> unreal, dude. I, I generally just focus on the most realistic one, and it's generally this show, and do it, work really hard, sacrifice some sleep, uh, of uh, yeah, <laughs> suffer. Yeah, I suffer. You do. To top three ways to get out of your head when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. Suffer for a while. Yeah, and then you won't have to. Um, I go to the gym. I clean. I clean a Ooh. lot. I like to clean, and I I have to move soon. So I've started like decluttering, which has been feeling really good. Um, oh, yeah. but I've dude, I've turned into a nighttime gym guy. Like it's Ooh. a. It's 9.35 in the evening tonight. As soon as we wrap and I send you everything, I'm going straight to the gym. There's two people in there. It's amazing. That's one of the great perks of living alone, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, I'm, you're on your own schedule, truly. Do whatever I want. It's the best. Also, one of the, one of the best things to get out of your head, binge eat. Oh, dude. <sighs> the goat. <laughs> On this on this meal thing that I'm doing with the program, I get mm-hmm. two cheap meals a week, ah. which is actually really nice because I can really yeah. like just hyper focus on the one. Yeah. And uh, the other day I had a Lou Malnati's. <sighs> I just had that. A, sounds so good, dude. It was. Oh, my uncle Lou. Yeah, sounds yeah, amazing. Eat, 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 eat a and good then go meal. to the gym. Best zero sugar soda, not diet. What the fuck? Does, oh, like zero. Oh, so not Diet Coke, which is how I, I, I would be a prick about that and be like, well, actually, I like yeah. that. Um, um, Coke Zero. Dr. Pepper up. Zero. Oh. Sprite Zero. And. Coke Zero. And uh, Dr. Pepper Cream Soda Zero. Is it Diet Baja Blast or is it Baja Blast Zero? It's uh, I think it's Zero. I think Great it is too. Call. Yeah, <sighs> I think it is too. And it. Dude, have you had the Crispinata? No, it's an empanada that is the crispiest little thing with chicken and cheese in it from Taco Bell. Yeah, I bet we have it here. And I know they have it in Wisconsin <laughs> and it have like, been gone a while. Yeah, dude, they're like two bucks. They come with like a oh, They're fucking great. I've Crispin been you know, I've been completely disconnected from reality for the past two weeks. I've just been really excited to. Get home and listen to my favorite rappers, P. Diddy and Meek Mill, and just you know really, <laughs> really move on and just get reconnected with with yeah. American culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harm's Way non fest shows when so soon, right? Yeah. Well, a lot this year. So <laughs> a lot. So just stay tuned. Uh, how small were the bathrooms over there in Japan? Small bathrooms. You're a big guy. Did you run into any size issues? A few th- things. Yeah, there was a there's a train. One of the train uh, crossings that we had to go to. Yeah, it's literally like a three foot thing you have to like crawl under to get to. What? 
I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I think you could go around, but it's just yeah. like a shortcut where you can just crawl under this thing. Did Lana just walk straight? Uh, she walked straight. <laughs> just through. Yeah, like straight. with a book straight. on her head, straight through. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't feel claustrophobic in bathrooms at all. Good. If anything, they're all single stall, spacious bidets everywhere. Yeah, that's bidets the best. at Disneyland, dude. Yeah, it's the best. It's Come the most on. confusing place, too, because there will be... In the same like public or you know semi public restroom, there's going to be the most advanced bidet and warm toilet you've ever seen, and then yeah. a squat hole. Well, the squat holes are kind of gone in Tokyo. I think okay. maybe they're the only time I've run into the squat hole was in Osaka and Nagoya. I think mm -hmm. I remember the main venue in Osaka for a while had the squat hole, mm -hmm. and that's why now on every toilet there's a little warning sign. Of like, there's instructions on how to sit on the toilet. Because it's for, for probably either really rural or elderly people. 100%. Of yeah. like, no, don't don't stand on it. Yeah, don't stand you on it. You have to sit, sit like this. Yeah. There's, it's written on every single public bathroom. Wow. Pretty amazing. I didn't even ask, um, did Lana and everybody's first time, did they have a fun oh, time? Oh, they, I mean, I, I've told everybody the whole time, like, this is, you're never going to want to do anything ever again that's yeah. pretty much the consensus beautiful except for mac who's a fucker and he's like yeah i want to go somewhere else before i come back whereas me i've like i found the the thing i like to do i found the place i like to go to <laughs> i do want to go to korea oh dude seoul would be amazing i want to sure. do that you said that about mac like literally the second you're like yeah i want to go someplace else in a huge thunder bolt like bolt of a or a Rolling thunder just Zeus clapped. was just Next being like you. Mac. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top three albums released before 1980. Oh, good fucking question. That All right. Fun. Well, Cough Cool came out in 1978. Uh, Misfits, the best band ever. Black Sabbath. Yeah, Black Sabbath. Which Self record? Self-titled. Yeah. Before 1980. I would say Zeppelin 2. I, any any of the first four Led Zeppelin records. When was Genesis Wind, wind and Wuthering? Seven, oh, 76, dude. Woo! Just made it. That's one. Mm, who's Next was in the 70s. I might say that. That's a good... Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what? Dude, how crazy is Bob O'Reilly? The funny thing about Bob O'Reilly... Are you sick of it? No. Dude, when okay. they fucking played it, when I went with my mom and they played it, I lost my yeah. mind. Like that song hits. It's insane. When the, the drum fill. Yeah. And the funny Crazy. thing about it is it's a four chord song. You know, it's just like right. a pop song. Yeah, but they found the magic. He found it. The dude. tones and everything. Why is it called Bob O'Reilly? It's a, uh, it's, it's Bob O'Reilly is a, like a limerick. It's like an old, like traditional. That's why there's like a, a like violin Danny Boy? piece at the end. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Okay. Wait, when was ABBA Super Trooper? Because that would be... I, I feel like that's 70s. Uh, 1980. Fuck. Fuck. Uh, uh, let's see. What's the, what the first police record? Or Ragata? Top three. Knowing me, I would go a Sabbath record, a Zeppelin record, and a Who record. I that's would say Black Sabbath, Abbey Road. When was Off the Wall? 79. No. Off the wall. <laughs> oh, damn. Good call. Yeah. Off Did you know wall. what's so funny? You, you mentioned the Beatles, but a different album and era entirely. I was at coffee shop today and they normally play very smooth, you know, fucking like the, the most indie, indie, really low fi very soft. You know, mm -hmm. I want to hold your hand came on. Banger, dude. Dude, obvious, obvious. Rocking ass song. Dude, it's like. When you're when you're used to something for like an hour and then that comes on, it's like abrasive. Yeah. To the point where I can't imagine being like an old guy at that time and be like, "What the fuck is this?" I, I mean, it was like extreme music. It was. It was. The, it, you, it, the America was protesting it. You yeah. Know? Like so it cool. was. It was. It was as if an evil entity was entering the country, like a foreign yeah, invader. The, the British, Paul Revere. I know. They were it was coming. crazy. Beatlemania, man. Yeah. It was extreme music. I love it. It was pop music and it was extreme music. It's bizarre. They were banned like, for seven years. It's like the nineties. I uh, dude, that that is one of the craziest facts about the Beatles is that they seven were banned years for seven years. Changed every genre. And they only toured for like four. 
Yeah, they stopped playing music because it's just it was unsustainable. And then they started again, and they were like, "This is kind of fun." And then they were like, "This is fucked up. We gotta stop." <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm really curious to see what the uh, the like four part biopic thing is going to be like. You know about oh, that? No, all I know is the one that just came out. So the dude that directed 1917 oh. is going to do a movie about each one. Is each it Beatle. fictional? Yeah, yeah no, like, yeah, like a, like okay. a, an actual movie, not a documentary. Whoa! So that could be good. Wow! The George movie is going to be, dude. Incredible. He's the f- fucking goat, dude. He's number one. Rank, rank your Beatles. George. Yep. Now this one's tough, but I think there's a clear winner. In terms of just as a guy or sheer musical output? Both. It's got to be both. It's got, I mean, it's got to be Paul then. Yeah, 100%. 100%. George, Paul, Ringo. Really? You put, yeah. is, is that the drummer in you putting Ringo yeah. over? I think I would go. I'd Dude, go Ringo, Ringo seems like the coolest guy. He does, 100%. The fact that he was on fucking Charlie and the, the tank engine, is it Charlie? Yeah. He's in Popstar. <laughs> yeah. You know? What a guy. And he's hilarious in it. Yeah, he's the, he says the line where he's like, "It's uh, after Connor does the gay rights song." He's writing this song for gay marriage, you know, like it's not allowed; it's allowed now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's the greatest uh, movie ever made. But dude, fucking the first record that George puts out is a triple LP of <laughs> of every song they've ever rejected. Just being like, "Listen how fucking good these are." And there's some of the best songs ever, ever written written in music on that. It's unbelievable. It's fucking crazy. If you were to start a fast food mascot fight club, who would you choose and why? Wow. Hamburglar. You think Hamburglar's taking it over the Burger King? The King has people doing his dirty work. Yeah, but there's a, he got, it's like Kingpin. He got there somehow. I think he, I think he was born into it. It's a monarchy. What are other it's, fast food? Or it's a patriarch. I don't Wendy's know. Wendy's getting. Maybe Wendy knows some fucking. Wendy, I my <laughs> grandpa was Wendy's personal trainer for some time. Wait, 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 wait. Wendy's a real person, and my grandfather was her personal trainer for some time. Personal trainers existed that long ago. Well, no, Wendy's not that old. What? Dave Thomas. Wendy is Dave Thomas's daughter. Oh, really? Dave Thomas named it after his daughter, Wendy, and my grandfather was her <laughs> personal trainer. My grandpa's like five two and fucking jacked. Really? Which side? Yeah. Mom's side. Mom's Baldest side. Baldest man you've ever seen. <laughs> Which is why it's coming. <laughs> um, wow. I, I don't know. I think Hamburglar is, you know, he's done time. He's, he's done time. He's hardened. Sure. He's battle hardened, you know? But you know who I, I bet they would all want to fuck up is the fucking mayor. The burger mayor. Yeah, absolutely. That scumbag. Total fucking bureaucrat piece Jack of Jack in the shit. box, he's a suit, you know? Yeah. He's Grimace trying. could probably fuck somebody up. Dude, Grimace will take you. Dude, what's that? There's an amazing uh, Habib quote. Uh, Grimace will take you into some deep waters, dude. 100%. He'll take you into you. deep. He'll take you into deep water and make you learn things about yourself. Dude, those Quiznos puppets, the those freaks. Freaky little fucks. Dude. Those will scare anybody. Quiznos <laughs> Put them in Smash Bros. What? <laughs> It's like ice now climbers. Now entering the, the, the yeah. battlefield. Freaky little it fox. Was <laughs> <laughs> what, what are other fast food mascots? Taco Bell doesn't really have one. They, they have the, the chihuahua. They have the they racist the, chihuahua for the a while. racist chihuahua, yeah. Um, Chick-fil-A doesn't have one. It's like they have the, the, the cows. Or the GOP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have uh, the Westboro Baptist Church yeah, is fighting on behalf of Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I picked the, the hamburgers. He's my captain. I'm going the king. Hamburgers gonna fuck him up, dude. Dude, no fucking way, dude. Um, <laughs> thoughts on cosmic bowling? <laughs> I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun anecdote. Uh, over the weekend, there was a fundraiser for Shane and Empire Productions in Chicago. Shane is uh, gonna acquire and procure a, a DIY space for Chicago hardcore explicitly Incredible. for Chicago hardcore metal and you know all the the adjacent relevant scenes wow. um the fundraiser was in the fireside which I've talked about a thousand times yeah I I didn't bowl personally I just wasn't in the mood but there was bowling there was food <laughs> there was a, a silent raffle 
I won a, a Planet of Attack shirt, which was like an early Chicago hardcore band. John Caution played drums. Um, and on the back of it says Bomb Worker Park, which is where I right. live. So I had to get it. It was designed by A-Ross, who, would, who was also in right. Planet of Attack and played with Harm's Ray Bunch. And I got a sick, it's over there. I can't really reach it, but I got a sick. The second Killer LP is like this like fantasy looking um, map for mm. all who wander are not lost. And I got a print of it. One of one is seven. Five oh. went to the band. One went to Clint, and then there was one extra. I got the extra. <sighs> went to went to a good home. They all, dude. He had a. It, it was a fifth pressing, which made me kind of back off the ledge a little bit. Fifth pressing, test press. Satisfaction is the death of desire. <laughs> fifth pressing, but fifth press. pressing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that might be when they had to take the sample out. If there was a test press, but for fifth pressing, because they had the samples on there for quite some time. Is there not a test press for why every would, pressing? No, no there's not. Mm, right. Because they just use the same plate. There's, so there's a reason a fifth pressing test press would need to be made. Why would it be fifth? Oh, because it had been pressed four previous times on the same plate. And then the I see. Interesting. Interesting. Which is kind of cool. That's still kind of unique. Someone got it for like Someone. 200 bucks. But that's why aren't there shows at the fireside? The guy who runs it, it's still the same guy who always did them. The same guy has owned the fireside for the last fucking 30 years. Mm -hmm. Straight up doesn't like people. That's it. Yeah, but mm. it's a business. It's yeah, a bowling and, and, alley. And, like they, and they've stayed in business not doing shows, so they do good enough. Okay. It's a bar, too, so there's that. Uh. Um, they just don't need to do shows, basically. They don't, they don't need the, the hassle. What's so funny is, no, they do. Hmm. They definitely do. I, I was told about a face-to-face -face show there. The cap, I think, was eventually shrunk to like 400. Uh -huh. There was a face-to-face -face show there before fire marshals got called and shit where 900 people paid. <laughs> there were people to the, to the, where the, uh, the pin reset things are, like the end of the alley. Wow people back to there for this show. That's pretty cool. So they definitely need it, but whatever the guy just doesn't, he doesn't want it. Okay. But raised right. a bunch of money for Shane and it was cool. And it was a lot of fun. And um, that's amazing. Well, I can't wait to see what that turns into. Yeah, me too. Cause is every like Cobra lounge sub T Cobra lounge who, sub T who owns those beat kitchen, B kitchen and sub T are the same. I don't know who owns it. Um, Cobra lounge. I know has a connection to Riot Fest mm. where, so for example, for those of you who may not know, when the Rumble happens every year, which is, it's in July of this year, announcement coming soon, the, the fest is in the parking lot outside, the PA, the stage, the light, everything was paid for and donated by Riot Fest. Oh, that's which awesome. Which is fucking sick. Like, that's yeah, a really that's cool thing. Riot Fest, to my knowledge, might be along, it might be the biggest non like owned by live nation whatever yeah. fest of punk coachella rock is straight up golden voice and what's which like is punk aeg rock, which is what's psycho vegas that one might be that one might be cool so it might be that one it might be that in like riot yeah. fest you know so the fact whereas that no values fest that just got announced is is gold golden voice it's the same company that brings you coachella mm. AEG, a multi-billion dollar corporation making a punk fest called No Values. Uh, <laughs> anyway, have you two become closer as friends because of hard lore? Of course. Yeah, definitely. Like 100%. Definitely. We so, were um, always, it was funny, Colin and I got put together in a, I don't know if you remember this, we got put together in a, um, a group chat over a, the authenticity of a typo negative shirt once. Interesting forever ago maybe before before the tour before the tour yeah a few years before the tour wow and then the tour at the tour i, I would say we we became friends we would always yeah. see each other say what's up we didn't we wouldn't talk all that much it became kind of a like a covid thing yeah 100 percent. it was when we were like started talking more often then this came out of that because you started was, streaming and mm -hmm. it was like this. Well, obviously, us touring together was where we actually became close. And then we toured together again, again and we got even yeah. closer. Yeah. Talked all the time. And then uh, the tech, we would just Zoom. We would just do literally this and talk about streaming and tech stuff and just cameras and microphones and whatnot. 
and, and then uh, we were doing stories D&D would come up. Yep. Yeah, for, D&D. That's right. For several weeks, and that was cool. Mm-hmm. That's still a thing I would kind of like to do. That's with a this. Patreon Maybe that's thing. a Patreon. Thing. That's a Patreon gimmick. Easy. Love it. Uh, sold. Yeah, um, easy. Yeah, absolutely. But Undoubtedly. Definitely. definitely. We, I mean, we're fucking attached to the hip forever because of this thing, you know? So, of course. Y'all doing anything special for LDB? Would love to meet you guys. We'll definitely be around. Yeah, we got to talk about that still. <laughs> yeah. Colin, we literally talked for 20 minutes before we started recording about other stuff and like haven't yeah. really gotten a good catch up. So yeah, we'll, we we have some stuff that we have to film. Yeah, but Oh, we'll, that's true. That's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm most excited for that. Honestly. It's going to be amazing. Um, yeah, well, you'll know about that soon. It's but we'll fun. be around for sure. You're playing the Hate Breed Day. Yeah, playing first day. And Harm's Way is playing that day. And then Weapon X is playing the next day. So we Beautiful. will be around for sure. We are, we're in the cut mm-hmm. that weekend. Uh, how do Ben... This is interesting. Can either of you out Pizza the Hut? Nobody out pizza. Nobody I can out. eat the whole... I mean, nobody can pizza-wise. You know, they got the best one. Yeah. You think so? You think it's better than Domino's? I, I, it's, and it's just cause I grew up eating it. So it's Dude, the same. I agree. Right now they got the melt sandwich thing. What's that? They basically replaced the Pizone. Okay. Were you a fan of the Pizone? I, I, I definitely had had it. Oh my God. The Pizone was $5. It was incredible. Yeah. But they've replaced it with like a san- a pizza sandwich. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. It's like actually good by any metric. Check Just, out the pepperoni melt from Pizza Hut. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, how do bands typically get paid on tour? This is an interesting question. This is is it by guarantee <clears throat> or is it by the individual draw of each tour date or another way? So it's Great changed. Question. It's changed quite a bit over the yeah. years. It, 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 when we first started touring heavy, it was always guarantee. Yeah. Always. And it was always very low. Very low. The first <laughs> yeah. big tour, I've, I've talked about it before, the per, first big tour Harm's Way ever did, we were getting $150 a night for five weeks of touring and selling about that much in merch. Yeah. Rough, 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 rough. If you, if you get home and you haven't personally spent any money, it was like you were the richest person a lot. I, 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 I re- we, made, we made money you know, pretty early off of like, and, and like a little bit of money, hundreds, not a yeah. ton. Uh, the first time we made money after Europe, that uh, was like, oh shit. Cause that's, Fuck you lose yeah. your ass the first three times you go. Absolutely. Um, now, yeah, it's, I mean, you, sometimes you have a door deal like for the, for the better, you know? Yeah. Right. It's like, Hey, this is going to be good. You should do a door deal. You should do a door deal. Cause gonna you're going to awesome. make way more. Um, or, what was funny, the cobalt, <laughs> dude, this is a, this is an insane, people don't even believe this when you say it. The <laughs> cobalt had a clipboard at the beginning where you had to say who you were there to see. Oh yeah, yeah I remember shit like that. And that's how they determined how much each man got paid. <laughs> and you could just say all of them and they would mark all of them, but people didn't. They just said the headliner. It was oh insane. God. Um, one, one thing I'll say. Another thing that exists for anybody who doesn't know is if if a headliner is doing really well and it sells out, there's going to be a thing called back end. Oh, back end rocks. Back end is the best thing that has ever existed. That's yeah. kind of when if you're a headliner, you're you're getting your guarantee and you're making more. You make more you if make the more. show sells out. If the show sells it's out. it's like, hey, it's like a bonus. It's like getting a, a bonus. There's you know? also, I don't know, how do you feel about this? A couple of shows we played recently, the Metro was one of them. Where if you sell out, there's no merch cut. What? No merch cut. I mean, I don't tour, so I haven't experienced that really. But that sounds incredible. Right? Because cause, cause then the argument is like, what are you taking a cut for? Yeah. It's sold out. I gave you this sold out show. I, I gave you the most here, money you, know? you could hope to make. Yeah. So your expenses are covered. You have no reason to take a cut. That's true. It's kind of cool. True. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I still obviously merch cuts are fucking bullshit, but it's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, there's it's there's no justification whatsoever for that. One of the most class act stand up things ever. And they don't exist anymore, so I can talk about it with impunity, I feel. Every time I die a tour, Webster Hall, 
uh, no, no, uh, 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 Brooklyn. It's uh, Williamsburg Music Hall or School of Music, something like that. Big ass venue, big old thing in Brooklyn. Every time I die, sold it out, made back out or back end, split it with the tour package. Wow. That's incredible. That's a class act. You never see that. That is their money. No one's expected to do that. Yeah. And they gave everybody a little taste. That's it. Uh, was the band to like, dude, they were the band that the band, showed actually. us like how to tour and how to, how to operate, how to kind of carry yourself. How to act. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a, I, I've had a reckoning lately, you yeah. know, in the past year or so. And I, I'm sure I've said this on here before where uh, growing up being the youngest person in the room, which I was for a long time. Yes. Yeah, I would look around and be like, I don't know that guy, you know, mm -hmm. and expect like, ah, okay, whatever. I don't know that guy. Now, as somebody who's older, I see a younger person. I think, I don't know that guy. That's my fault. You know? Ooh, wow. Like that's, that's up to me to know that guy. Yeah. Like to, to make people feel welcome and yeah. that, like they're supposed to be here and then I want them here, which I do. Yes. So wow. it, uh, every time I died, did that as a band to other bands. Dude, I mean, we had already toured with them, but the the first day of Warp Tour, when like you can get on the bus and you're counting merch, you're doing all, you're, there's like a, a literal like school orientation. There's like that for Warp Tour in Pomona. And we're doing all that and doing all the other thing. And like, we like very timidly like got on the bus, like, hey guys, like, is it cool if we're, and they were like, open arm hugs. Like, of course, what do you think? Like all of them, you know, across wow. the borders, so, like this is yours. Like, what are you talking about? Class act. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, favorite city to play in Australia. I don't oh. remember. <laughs> um, Melbourne is, is Melbourne. Melbourne is unbelievable. Not only because that means I'm going to see one of my favorite human beings on, hey, on the planet. Top but, cunt. <laughs> Toughest cunt, Aaron Osborne. <laughs> but um, also the, the the shows are always really good. Um, and then um, Sydney is fucking... I would love, love, love to go back and see what Speed and the current generation of hardcore have done and like what's changed. Because I was there in 2019. I was there. Yeah. You know, COVID you included. Were there I was right there before. Semi, semi re recently. So I would love to see I was there it far before that. I would also love to go back. Wink. wink. <laughs> uh, any chance? Uh, this is the next question. Any chance of a Twitching Tongues God's Head Harm's Way Australia tour? Wouldn't that be the dream? You make it happen. We'll be there. I'll I'll text my my buddy Candace. Uh, waffles or pancakes? Holy shit, dude! I'm waffles. not even joke. I'm not even joking with you. I recently saw another podcast where they do entire episodes based on this or that. Right. So really? it's like just any two things, Pepsi or Coke or like whatever. Right. And I thought to myself, what would be a good one? And I thought waffles or pancakes. I mean, it's the, waffles a hundred percent. It's waffles a hundred percent, but that is because I think it's much easier to get a good waffle than it is to find a good pancake. The technological aspect of yes. waffles, the, the yes. construction allows for better syrup distribution. Oh yeah, and and just manufacturing of the waffle itself, it's in a thing. That's it's in a thing. It's timed. It's pressed. It's perfect. Fucking flapjacks, out of control. Good luck. It's the wild yeah. west on there. That's you're you're getting a different thing every time. There's no way to make a pancake the same twice. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. And whereas and the waffle the, I, is is controlled chaos. Anybody in Chicago, if you haven't had the bonga room white chocolate caramel pretzel pancakes. Those are the best pancakes I've ever had personally. They are okay. crazy. I mean, I, I'll, still, I'll take a Japanese fluffy pancake over both. I'll tell you that much. But but that being said, that bongo room pancake I'm just talking about, that's incredible and literally perfect. Yeah. I'll take a Waffle House waffle over. Oh, God, the Waffle House waffle. Oh, my God. They're dude. perfect, dude. It's perfect. it's perfect. I'm so hungry and tired that I think I would kill a man to eat a Waffle House <laughs> waffle right now. Cold blood. <laughs> Cold bloody. Is Japan just like the Yakuza game series? Straight up, yes. My day is exactly game. like Ichiban Kaska. <laughs> I passed by the, the the pachinko slot. I didn't play pachinko. 
Did you play any? Do they have? I was gonna ask. Do they have gambling there? It's pachinko, so it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, its own kind of slot. Yeah, where it's kind of like an arcade game that is gambling. And Zuma was very seriously like, "Don't do it." Really? He's like, you will lose. Oh, don't do it. I see. I see. So I didn't do it. My, um, are you? I'm sure follow Vegas Matt. I don't know Vegas Matt. You don't know Vegas Matt. He's an older gentleman who plays slots heavy. I know a couple. I'm I'm tapped into YouTube slot world. So that's what I'm talking about. He's YouTube he's on shorts there? all day. Okay, I, so I, shorts. I'm not a shorts man. But I still feel okay. Is he the guy that like? He, he there's like, good hundreds and bad hundreds, and he always gets rid of the bad hundreds. What? Good hundreds have the blue ribbon. Bad hundreds are the old ones, the white ones. Really? So if he ever gets them, he gambles them. But I mean, I literally he he. I oh, he gambles him. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, not not get rid of, but you know, um, there's that guy, and then I love the guy who's like, he crumples the money. He's the younger guy with a Boston accent. He's like, I got this two hundred dollar ticket. I'm gonna show you how to turn it into eight hundred, and he like goes and does his shit. Unbelievable. I gotta play high limit pinball. That seems like, dude, you've seen me play pinball. I know you've watched me play it, and it's like <sighs> it, I've never had an unbelievable pinball bonus. Never really. Once. I'll get like 100, 200 bucks and I'll be doing 10, $20 spins. It is enticing. It is enticing, but it's so hard to get the yeah. thing at the bottom. Vegas Matt. I've never fucking, done it. Really? Uh. Yeah, but think about it. You're seeing what he wants you to see. And also he's he's quite literally doing $1,000 spins. And he's there every day. Every day. All day. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And he's posts eight big wins a year. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> Eight out of 365 is tough. Yeah. Uh, worst video game you've ever played. That's tough because you stop playing the worst video game you've ever played. You know? And uh, dude, I also stop playing amazing games because I just get like, yeah. like Red Dead Redemption 2, I never finished. Yeah, same. It's probably one of the best games ever, ever. made. Best things ever. You know? What's the worst game you've ever finished? Ooh, that's a good question. May. No, I can't say Hogwarts Legacy was bad. It was fucking mm. awesome. It was just kind of got to be the same thing over and over, but it doesn't make it bad. I'll tell you the most disappointing game I've ever played. There, that's a good way to put it. Disappointing. I got one. Yeah, go ahead. Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm, I remember I waited, that being... I waited half my life for this fucking piece of shit. Why was it so bad? They fundamentally completely changed the thing that they do. The first, oh. first and second one are so good because it's like Forrest Gump, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're Forrest Gump in these historical Disney events and Final Fantasy events. You're in the middle of these stories that you know and love, ch altering them mm -hmm. through your your actions. Mm -hmm. The third one is like creating original stories in like Toy Story world and stuff. We've had 60 years of Disney. Disney. I don't need that. I'm out. Yeah. I don't want to hear fake Tom Hanks reciting original di shitty dialogue. You know? I'm out. Um Fable one. Oh my God. What a pile of shit. Here's, here's the thing. I went to a midnight release for this fucking oh, game. Everybody did. Cause it was the first, it was like, Oh my God. Xbox is getting a like Zelda. A, 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 yeah. I went home and started playing it. I was, it was whenever it was summer or something. I didn't have school. I don't know. Played it all night. Beat it. First night. First session. I beat <sighs> this game. I was crushed. I couldn't believe. I was like, well, obviously I just killed the bad guy or whatever. This came and then it was like roll credits. And that that devastated me. I think it was like 10 hours. How fucking dare they do this? I was devastated. Uh, I just thought of a good one um, that came up the other day and you mentioned Disney. Top three favorite Disney villains. Ooh. I'll give you mine. Please. Number three. The the evil queen, Snow White. She's yeah. got swag for days. Oh, gee. Right? She's fucking awesome. Who was awesome. first, Snow White or Sleeping Beauty? Snow White. Snow White was number one. Swag for days can turn into a scary way. I love a bitch, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Two, Hook. Captain oh James my God, the goat. Hook. Unbelievable. Which, you doing... Uh Here's the thing. Hoffman version. <laughs> Here's the thing. Watching original Peter Pan animated is pretty brutal. Yeah. It's very culturally insensitive and also like really shrill and just kind of difficult to watch. Yeah. But Hook is incredible in it. Obviously, Hoffman is 
Like that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Dude, us having the realization that we are Captain Hook and Smee is pretty unbelievable. Pretty unbelievable. It really I'm, changed things. Get your ass over here. <laughs> like yeah. that's literally me just Don't like, try all to the stop time. me, Smee. Don't try to stop me. I was gonna open the case here, but I'm like, yeah, don't, don't try do. to stop me. <laughs> Smee, Smee, try to stop me. <laughs> Get your try, ass try to stop me, Smee. Number one favorite Disney villain, Hades from her. Oh, Hades is incredible, dude. He is fucking perfect. That's really where you really got to separate the art from the artist of James yeah, Woods. Yeah, there, big huh? time, big time. <laughs> Voice actor is no good. James Wood can suck it. Yeah, but amazing character. Hades is pretty untouchable. I mean, that's the king of hell, you know, in Come a Disney on. movie. That's incredible. They call the underworld. I yeah. love that. What would mine be? Uh, I think the, 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 the tragedy of Lion King oh, dude, being Scar? carried by Scar is pretty unbelievable. Jeremy Irons doing yeah. the voice. Come, Come on. on. He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. He, that's like, that's a scientifically good movie animated or not yeah um i would say villain what's the time where i was like damn that's a great villain in an animated movie yeah well or disney more Mm. specifically dude randall from monsters inc oh is this steve buscemi yes steve Steve Buscemi. buscemi fuck yeah dude that's a good one he's so scary he's so scary Woo. That's a good that, villain. That's a good one. And I mean, there's fucking, there's Scar, there's yeah. there's the uh, the Mulan Mongol guy. Yeah, the fake, fake Genghis Khan. F- fake Genghis. <laughs> Fangus Khan. Fangus Khan. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fun. They should get rid of Tomorrowland and turn it into villain land. That would be awesome. But Tomorrowland, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of yesterday one, land. It's got one thing. Space Mountain. It's got some And Astro Blasters. Yeah. yeah, Star Wars has its own spot now. Will Hardlore be in Texas for the NSFW weekend? I will. I will be. One half will be. Yeah. One half will be, and then we'll talk about it. You know, yeah. We'll talk about Texas. We'll do a Texas roundup. Ugh. Texas review. I'm going to skip <laughs> I love that it. one. Yeah. Uh, Bo answered this one one evening in the general channel, but want to get Colin's answer. Worst movie you've ever seen? Oh, geez. I don't even remember what I said. Worst movie I've ever finished. I'll go with that. Yeah. Worst movies I've seen in theaters. Transformers The Last Night. Wow. Hangover 3. Oh. Tom Cruise is The Mummy. <laughs> and Holmes and Watson. Dude, I I didn't it's, hate Holmes and Watson. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> I didn't hate I laughed a couple times. It was so bad. I had to pee the whole time, and it was so bad that I didn't mind somebody in front of me placing a an online cheesecake factory ordered the whole movie. The entire movie, they were trying to figure out what to get from cheesecake factory and 15 minutes. first 15 minutes. I was like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm sick in a theater. I love I'm, what you did during saw 10. Dude, I am was deranged funny. in a movie theater. I'm <laughs> I'm straight up. I'm dark sided. <laughs> and 15 minutes later, I let this man can keep scrolling. Cause I was like, he's right. Just, just do it. This, uh, this is more important than this for the first I, time. I remember now what I said, and it was Gotti. The first, <laughs> lit, quite literally, we put it on in the hotel room. Harmsway was on tour one night, and within the first 20 seconds, all laughed out loud. At how bad it was? That just uh, immediately, because it was literally John Travolta <laughs> like, you want to know what a wise guy is? And it's like immediately, <laughs> like this is, no, that was serious. That. <laughs> yeah. Like a me, yeah, James. <laughs> um, once when again, warp tour the same day when we were getting on the bus with every time I die, we went and saw the first Jurassic Park, Jurassic World with uh Chris Pratt, the first mm. one. It was fucking 95 degrees, middle of yeah. summer, Pomona. We left the movie theater, the first Jurassic World. Yes, we I left. Like that one. We left for whatever reason. We were we were all just like, "Do you guys want to get out here yeah. to go and like be hot on the bus instead wow. of being in an air conditioned movie theater?" It was that like, "Oh my fucking god!" It's pretty. It's not great. I would yeah. say it's not good. But I I had a good time, and we all saw it as a band as well in the yeah. Netherlands when it came out. And this is a story I literally can't tell on the show. 
Mm. Mm. The dank thing. You know what I'm uh, talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But that was one of the hardest. That's probably the hardest I've ever laughed in my whole life. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jurassic World. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did Bo joining X Weapon X come about? Please release more music. Uh, it was Brian literally messaged me and said, hey, Inclination has Chris as like their old head, even though I don't. He might be not the oldest. We want you as our old head. And I said, OK. And that was Done. literally it. I love that Brian is a later Edgeman. Edgeman, yeah. And like rolled with it and yeah. rides for it. Like, I really like that. I love that there's two brothers in it. I love that Brian and Isaac are arguably, Isaac in particular, because there's also inclination, have so many other fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, whatever in the oven. And like. That they, no, don't, I, they don't need to have anything They else. don't have to do any of this. It's for the love of the game. For If anybody, like, I have not a negative thing to say about anybody in Knock Loose, and, the, and I think it, like, the proof is so in the pudding. Like, yeah, 100%. When I, I'm watching Dying Fetus, I'm watching Isaacs get annihilated yeah. during Dying Fetus. You know what I mean? At FYA. Like, I love it. They're all, they're all just, they're all in. So it was just, like, an easy decision, and, like, nothing's cooler than straight edge. So there you go. <sighs> Preach, my brother. <laughs> Biggest poop. I have an answer. It's really, <laughs> it's really embarrassing. I do too. Uh, I won't. I will say longest pee for me. What was, mm. the, what was the longest you've ever peed? Longest you remember the moment? Because most, I feel like most people remember the moment where they peed the longest. Oh, that's interesting. Um, one of the times when I was doing the two jugs thing when I was sick on tour and I was drinking water over one and peeing into one, I fell asleep and woke up and peed like like a literal half gallon, which is yeah. I, a I lot know of all about it. That's so there's I'm a pee guy. I, yeah. I love pissing. Because yeah. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. You've seen it, happen. Yeah. Yeah, you drink a And sick when I'm water. recording vocals, I don't like to go in and out of the bathroom. So oh. I, I, I piss in gallon jugs and I'm filling them s several a day whenever recording vocals. So I piss. I'm, I piss. Yeah. Go piss, girl. <laughs> and one time I was in traffic for like hours, dead stop. <sighs> and I had to pee the whole time. This is coming home from Twitching Tongues practice in Orange County. And it gets so, I'm in so much pain that I'm, I'm confident that I was about to burst, like actually burst. Like yeah. I was in medical pain and you had nothing. Well, no, I had no, nothing, nowhere to go. I was desolate. When I finally got off and peed, I knew it was going to be so long that I set a timer and it was four minutes long. Whoa. Four minutes, like almost to the second of piss. 240 seconds of, of piss. piss. It was unreal, dude. I mean, like, you've heard it sometimes where, We'll stop. We take breaks during episodes. Sometimes I yeah. leave my mic rolling. Yeah, I'll come back. They're they're two minutes into a conversation. I was peeing the whole time. <laughs> oh, that is. You know what's so funny is like that has happened, and I just assumed you like checked on the dogs or checked no. on Lana or checked your phone. Pure or piss. Wow. The Long other. I will piss. say very recently I had a uh, an early wake up have to pee like dawn. Uh, oh shit! I better go pee, which yeah. doesn't really happen to me. And cause so I had must've drank that much prior and yeah. it was one of those ones where I was trying to stay sleepy while peeing. And I peed for so long that I was like fucking wide awake now. Uh, you were asleep peeing? No, but you know how you're like, oh, I'm, I, I, I better like keep my eyes closed and like I'll oh, be yeah. in, back in bed in you 30 seconds. You peed for seconds. so long that you were like, guess yeah. I'm up. <laughs> guess I'm up. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Uh, ever consider more regional hardcore documentaries? Sounds like New York hardcore is coming. Love to see one on Baltimore, DC. I think that's old, that's the end game for us. That right? is, yeah, that is the the ultimate end game is to be man versus food versus behind the Punk. music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's us. We'll be yeah. there soon. Well, yeah. someday. We need money to do that. We'll get money, there. Please. Uh, Colin, this is an interesting question. Colin, how is the experience in Japan as a heavily tattooed person? I could not go into gyms. Really. Got turned away at several gyms, even American gym chains. Couldn't work out there. Place called there was I mean, I couldn't go to Anytime Fitness, couldn't go to Gold's Gym. 
And then there was a local gym called Choco Zap. Yeah. As in zap the chocolate off your body. <laughs> and they literally mean it that way that I couldn't get go into. Even so if you covered up? Uh, I, think- I, there's no way I could fully cover up. Right. You know? Like yeah, my pants there. would come up or my sleeves would roll up or something yeah. that it just would be impossible. One of those fucking WWE Saudi women's match. Yeah, exactly. I need yeah. a, I need a full body, full body that really works. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's t- most places. It, it's no longer taboo. Like I could just eat at a sushi place in a t-shirt and that was fine. Yeah. But, uh, things like, you know, bath houses and, and gyms and that you, you have to cover up still. Or you can't go in. Uh, worst injury ever sustained at a show? I don't know. A concussion? Yeah, I've been I've been fairly fortunate. I've chipped I chipped a tooth during twitching tongues in the Netherlands once. Um, <laughs> uh, fucking sciatica. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I've been I've been yeah. fortunate. I don't. I'm 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 out. I'm not. I'm out. I'll be in there for you today. I don't, you know what? Okay. I'm not. Af- I'm not afraid of getting spin cucked during youth of today. You know yeah, what I mean? no, it's, it's not gonna that, happen. It's not. That You're kind the of most thing. dangerous man in the youth of today. It, thing. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. At worst injury ever witnessed at a show. I saw a woman die. Really? And get brought back to life. Oh Jesus! But she was dead. Wow. Where was that? Brainfest. Jesus. How'd she get brought back to life? I don't know. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Were there paramedics? Uh, no, they, they, they fucking cl- they clear. They cleared oh, her. Shit. They yeah. visited, or they defibrillated they, they her. her. Wow. We know the guy that did it. Um, how wow. many pizzas do you think you could eat in one sitting? How how many pizzas or slices? How many? God, they're setting me up. This yeah, is a fucking I'm, setup. Do you think they don't know your game, dude? How many pizzas? Listen, pizza nuggets are one thing because that's yeah. at least some protein that I can. I mean, cheese. Oh. There's cheese on pizza, but nuggets it's, are like mostly protein. True. Yeah. Pizzas. If I eat more than a pizza, dead. I'm this. I'm Buddha. I'm the fattest, saltiest thing you've ever seen. I'm immediately fat. I went to Pequods with our friends, Higher Power. And some of the guys from Drain recently. That's a three slice max. And I told all of them, you're going to eat two slices and you're going to think I could have another. Don't do it. Take it to the hotel and have it later. Yeah. or have it tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to. And almost everyone listened to me. One person from higher power did not. How it was, was like, set? oh, yeah. well, they didn't play. It was weird. They, it was like a routing day and they came okay. back a couple weeks later for the set. Ah. By the way, during drain, a dude was holding up the twitching tongues misfit shirt, like was crowd surfing, like, yeah, whoa, it was, it was wild. It was <laughs> that really makes wild. No sense. No I love sense. It. Yeah, it was, it was wild. Well, because of um, hard lore, we're kind of half Chicago, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's on, Hey, six, three, Oh, is on the slip mat. You See? Know what I mean? It's on it. Um, Which is so funny by the way that it's six, three, Oh, Oh, it's so funny. I'm just telling people your area. I'm code. from DuPage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. No, um, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, I guess I haven't talked about that either. We're playing, a, we're, we're doing the longest tour. Actually. Yeah, we are. Cause it's five shows. Uh, we're doing the longest tour we've done in uh, many years. Five shows with <laughs> drain terror. Uh, scowls on a bunch of them. King nines on some of them. Angel dust is on some of them. And it is on all of them. I understand. Mutually assured destruction is on all of them. Oh, and you're going to be in Chicago for it. Yeah, that's right. And God's hate. So the original plan, and mm-hmm. this just so you know, this was this was us looking out for Chicago, being like, no, we want to do something more special. Yeah. The original plan was twitching tongues both nights. Oh. Uh, and we were like, why would we do that? Let's have let's let's have God's hate do the other one. Yeah. So it was like a special thing because we haven't played Chicago in so long. So long. Two birds, one stone. So that was that wasn't that was all us just being like no 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 beautiful. You don't want us for two nights. Trust me, take take both. (laughs) So good. So that'll be cool. I'm really excited to play the Metro again. Favorite Ghibli movie studio? Oh, I went to the Studio Ghibli Museum. How was that? It was incredible. You can't take pictures in there. Fuck. And I understand why because it's like so whimsical and magical that you you have to 
see it for yourself. Yeah. Really cool. Favorite movie. It's, I mean, it's just like, I don't, I apologize if it's like a beginner answer or a cliche or whatever, but Spirited Away is like. Spirited Away is, is the godfather of animated movies. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Like that's film. That's cinema. They, here's the thing. They all kind of are. Sure. I've and seen Howl's. I've seen my neighbor Tor- 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 Yeah. Have you seen and Princess Mononoke? Princess, yes, I've seen that. Those, are, I think, those are the four I've seen. That uh. <laughs> Princess Princess Mononoke is maybe the most convincing. Dude, Princess Mononoke was so effective that Japan stopped using paper towels. You know. Wow. It's like the most effective eco ecological propaganda ever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, that's the most that's the most effective vegan marketing. It's more effective than Earth Crisis <laughs> is Princess Mononoke. I'm like, OK, we got to save this thing. And you uh, liked- so I would say Spirit Away, number one. Yeah. Princess Mononoke, number two. Dude. The boy in the Heron is really good. You know, what's so funny is I, 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 I haven't seen it, but I had understood that to be the consensus. It's really fucking good. I saw some hate on it recently in the, like, you know, the, the Game of Thrones where it's like a horse drawn that's like perfect. Yeah. And then by the end, it's bad. That was Boy in the Heron. Was the, the end is awesome. The, so Miyazaki's whole thing is that he starts animating them before the story is finished. Wow. Which is why the endings are always psycho off the rails. Right, right, right. Because he can which, just... Look back. They're all insane. Yeah, they're all insane. And this yeah. one is maybe the most insane. And uh, Dave Batista's whole character in arc is like the craziest thing he's ever done. The whole thing with the birds. Uh, I love the way it ends. I love the heron. Robert Pattinson giving his first animated performance ever going absolutely fucking insane in it. Sick. Like the the first animated performance in a long time that is memorable. Cool. Okay. Like, like acted like a voice actor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a fucking uh, Luke Skywalker. What's his like, name? Like, like rent Hamill. was due, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Rent was crazy. due. That's good. Is there a Japanese food you had in Japan that you like better in the U S interesting? I do think there is a ramen place that I like here more than anything I had in Japan. Yeah. I, but that's I had because ramen. the owners from Japan and whatnot. Yeah. You know. mm. They just I had make ramen what I like. a, a few times over there, and I didn't. Did white pepper is like a very s- strange um, flavor to me, and mm. a lot of times it's in it, and mm. I've I just have an aversion to it, and um, I wasn't impressed when I was over there. I was only there for like seven days, yeah. So didn't get the, get didn't get a whole good taste. I had a uh, yakisoba the last day. Mm-hmm. Good God, really? <laughs> oh my God, that's incredible. I don't even know what it is. It's like a, yeah. it's like a dark beef noodle or something. Good God, unbelievable! Like better in the U.S. Um, there's no the Coke Zero there is garbage. Really? It's ass. Booty from a butt. Interesting. I hated it. So that's the thing. I was like, re- a Diet Coke hit like a- actual crack when I got home. On the plane, or you had to wait till no, you No, I didn't do I waited. I waited. I got I got home, had one with lunch today, and it was like... Dude, I know people might saw think... colors. People might think, especially after our, our terrible soda review thing, uh, <laughs> which we need to redeem, that, like, there's a difference, but there is a literal... There's a difference between Canadian Coke oh, and yeah. American Coke, Big let alone time. foreign countries. Like, for better or for worse, the high fructose corn syrup and the aspartame in our beverages here... Hit the way I my brain knows them to hit. Is I mean because it's killing us and it's delicious. Yeah, We're it's being poisoned every day by the food here. Mm, gotta Thank die somehow. That's right. Uh, Collins, go to Fortnite tactics slash loadout. Dude, wait. I let let me answer this because <laughs> sitting next to this man while he's playing with <laughs> Lana, who's upstairs, also playing together, and yep. they're on voice comms. What I hear is, this is incredible. It'll be like match starting. They're in the fucking bus. And I hear, I hear a lot of go, all right, you know what time it is. And I hear Colin go, no. No, because dude, the second she can drop, she drops. And it drives me insane. 
And she just like, she'll drop and die immediately sometimes. It's, there's <laughs> memes about girls playing Fortnite out there, and it, she's all of them. Dude. It's crazy. It'll be a car just driving <sighs> off a cliff and exploding midair. And somehow, like, that's literally her. Uh, so she fucks my loadout every time. But I like, so I like a frenzy auto shotgun. Mm. And I like when my wife doesn't steal the front. You know, the, the when you kill the bosses, they always drop a legendary weapon. Uh -oh. And Lana's go-to thing will be, she'll be 10 a mile away. I got clips I can show you. You better not be on my motherfucking motorcycle that'll be hell to pay get the hell off bitch <laughs> there she'll be a mile away while i'm fighting for my life against an entire team i'll kill an entire team and while i'm just killing them healing she runs up and takes all the loot from <laughs> me killing the whole team <laughs> so good dude. it's unbelievable <laughs> but yeah my my ta my loadout i like a frenzy auto shotgun or like a grapple blade. I love a grapple blade. That's my favorite item in the game. What's your what's your skin these days? Uh, Gaga Chromatica armor. <laughs> and then do and, you do bad romance still? Uh, you can't play the songs anymore. They took they took that out. They oh, constantly like change a, things. I, I got you. I got you. But yeah, I I got the Gaga skin rocking right now. Um, uh, I love. I get you. Got to have an AR always, and then I'll either have a like a shield pot or a med kit. My mm -hmm. team, you know, I got a pretty good squad. Mm -hmm. It's Lana, who's you know, <laughs> the the lone survivor a lot of the times, yeah, or right. the first dead. Yeah, uh, our buddy Presley, mm -hmm. uh, our buddy Mina, play with Justice sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. Mm. Uh, who else do I play with? Ryan, my buddy Mina's wife or husband. Uh, yeah, it's the best game of all time. <laughs> Simply put. Mm. Uh, Bo, anything for 10 years anniversary of the second Wolf Note promo? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that was just uh, a thing that I, I don't, I would be more interested in starting something to do new music that is in that vein or, or a on, vein. A a vein, vein. Yeah, yeah. Then, then rehashing something that was like time and place for me. Especially like emotionally and kind of spiritually, for lack of a better word, that was a very dark time in in the, sure. in, the in the life of Bo. And I don't really care to revisit, to be honest. Gotcha. Yeah, do something new. Yeah. Uh, what is your tier list for Coke flavors? I know you're diet S, right? I'm diet all the way. So I would put diet S too, but I would but put it, Coke Zero S. Coke Zero X. S black can over diet. Right. You're OG, a, you're a OG zero cut. guy. You're a zero guy. I'm a zero guy. And the black can, the OG formula was goaded. That's number one. See, that's the thing, man. Diet ain't changed since the eighties since it was Coke two. <laughs> since, since yeah, new Coke, new diet new Coke, Coke is yeah. still, that's diet Coke. Now um, I would put vanilla Coke oh. right below it in a dude. I love vanilla Coke and like canned vanilla Coke. Dude, I was legit addicted when yeah. it came out because it came out when we were kids. Yeah, I remember. I was playing Morrowind, eating <sighs> Hot Pockets, drinking vanilla Coke. Dude, I remember it. Clear as day. I, I have that same memory and it's Star Wars Knights of the Republic. Yeah. And Coheed and Keeping Secrets. <laughs> what were you eating? Uh, surely bagel bites or, or tortinas pizza rolls. Dude, or something. I mean, that's just, that's just the, the children of hot pockets. A hundred percent. Yeah. And my eye is twitching. I'm so tired. Let me see, let me see. Oh yeah. Shit. This is a problem. He needs, he needs sleep. Pick one. Adamantium throwdown, 18 visions bleeding through throwdown. 
Throw it on, 100%. Like without 18 a fucking, Vision's close second. Yeah, I'm not even... I'm good on the rest. Yeah, I got you. Favorite Chicago Eats? Humboldt Park resident here. Humboldt Park. Um, dude, I'll tell you what. I went to Dayglow in Humboldt Park the other day. Colin, that's a you place. That's like a fancy cup kind of it place. It's a, it's, they, a, it's a flirty, sexy, naughty cup. You been there? Dayglow? Yeah. Yeah, they got it here. Jesus. Yeah. I got I got nothing. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, if you want vegan stuff, I say Handlebar is the best vegan spot in the city, in my opinion, as a non-vegan. It's a place that I love going to. Um, obviously, there's the obvious staples, Portillo's and Lou's and Pequot's and all that stuff. Uh, fantastic Korean food. It called Dayback in Chinatown. There's a noodle spot called Oystar on mm. Milwaukee. That is excellent. Really good buns. Wasabi also really good. Um, wasabi on Milwaukee also has really good ramen and uh, Wagyu bowls. Um, so, but I'll tell you what, if you eat meat, if you know somebody eats meat, go to a place called Jim's original. It's behind UIC mm. near South loop. Everything you order comes with fries, including fries. So if you order fries, you right. get two. You get fries. You order a can of pop, you're getting some fries. Do you know the guy that made that legendary, like my day in Chicago as a 28 year old male? No. Real? No, I don't. I don't know him. That thing's amazing. Yeah. Where yeah. I there's there's subtleties to it that I didn't understand as a mm -hmm. non-Chicago resident. Mm -hmm. Like he says, East Loop, which I guess doesn't exist. Yeah, it, it, there is no East Chicago. It's the lake. The, the way that the grid is laid out, and I know this doesn't make sense, and, and there is technically, there's Eastern addresses, but State Street is zero. So uh, a, a one block West is 100, and then 200, 300, and so on. It's gosh. all in a grid. East, there's it literally, I think it goes to like 500. Like there's only five blocks of East. For some oh, okay. reason, they started zero there. It was after the fire. It's a whole thing. So it's not called the East Loop. Yeah, it's just that it doesn't. I got gotcha. you. Doesn't exist because that's the lake. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, that it's video is unbelievable, dude. Yeah, it's great. All time favorite music collab. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, Un I mean, under pressure is pretty tough to beat. Under pressure. Uh, da -ba -da -da. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Uh, oh, dude, I just looked at, at my wall and I have a Cure poster up with a with a black kitty cat on it. Uh -huh. Robert Smith singing on the Blink-182 song. Oh. For any of... I, I, dude, I could... I don't know if you know it or not. I could show you this song. And it was like... They got... They sent it to Robert, hoping he would sing it. Didn't hear back. Didn't hear anything. Got it back an hour before the masters were due. Just not knowing whether or not it would ever come. Yeah, and it's they amazing. Would, and they, it's it's one of the best like Blink One Eighty Two songs ever. It's not wow. pop punk at all. Uh, you're you'll love it. Interesting. And it's fucking awesome. Does it sound like the Cure? It's it's really hard to describe. The 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 verse is like for all of this I know now mm. everything I know now. It sounds like the cure. It sounds like the cure with like a, a more modern. Is it off one of the the? I it's mean, I guess the, all the, the records were. Big. The, it's on self titled. I think the the face smiley face one. Okay, so still fairly old, but mm. it's. Whew. My favorite music collaboration is a little song called "Real Recognize Real." <laughs> By a band called Ice Pick. It's like every collaboration. <laughs> it's it's Josta, <laughs> Isaac, Ice T, Freddie Madball, Roger Murray, Pete Morsey, mm. Paul Bearer. Uh, I think there's more. Is there yeah. more? I think I think when we talked about it, there are there's more. And then Ice T does a. Actually, the best music collab ever is Six Feet Under and Ice-T on a song called One Bullet Left. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> That's the greatest guest vocal part of all time. How about Spit My Rage? I mean, that's 
that's I, the birth of ice pick you know it, it, that that was pre ice pick yeah it was to the well spin my rage is what when was when were the this underdogs is, this is your 2000 department. yeah 2004 four three? probably yeah, yeah yeah ice pick record came out while i was in high school wow right so like that could have been the thing where they were like we sound pretty good together <laughs> Dude. We'll have to ask. We'll we'll ask. I'll, I'll I'll try to ask and have an answer for this episode. Dude, Vogel World Collapse. That recorded into a MacBook, dude. Screaming Un- into his MacBook on a bus in Europe. Unbelievable. One of the best. He, there's a a thing in his cadence where he's like da 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 la da, and like he like and it's perfect and it sounds European. Yeah, it sounds awesome. He's like doing it. He's doing it extra European because yeah. he knows he's like it's it's awesome. Yeah, that's a Vogel, great one. I mean, Vogel guess, on best f- best guest y- spots. Yeah, that's a whole. That's uh, we yeah. need to stop this because yeah, that's you're right. You're right. Next week on Hard Lord, the, the best <laughs> guest spots of all time. Uh, okay, God's Hate UK show. When hey man, if you got the money, <laughs> hate is for the booking. <laughs> Uh, how does, in your op- opinion, the sound and hardcore, f- what the sound of hardcore flow over time, what shifts in your scene were you stoked about and what were you not? Oh. I recently went to an all, no, we'll, we'll answer the first part of that. Yeah. I went to I recently went to an all new band show in San Jose. There were kickback, irate, shattered realm and laid to rest covers. That's fucking crazy. That's that crazy, crazy to me. Yeah. Those are bands I had to convince people to to like, you know? I would have been one of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what shifts in your scene were you stoked about? I would say the death of Melodic Hardcore was, uh, brought me jubilation I've never felt before. That was a victory. It was huge. That was an internet. That was UN. That was a yeah. UN sanctioned victory. It was yeah. decided that this shit sucks and it's over. Yes, that was and, great. And the world applauded yeah you know there's some people hanging on yeah people get mad when we say that and I know, it's nothing I, it's nothing personal it's no, just it's like just not it's, what we like it's not what we like at all it's not and what listen, we want from this kind of music we love melodic music bo yes yes we really do last we tr- two weeks ago proves that yeah we really do it's just like not and as somebody who's like super into like youth crew which i would say is kind of the proto melodic the proto you know yeah. it's still just not for me yeah, there's nothing there for me. There's not one band there for me. I wouldn't call like if you consider Betrayed a melodic hardcore band. Yeah, I would say that's maybe the only one I like. But that's all hard straight edge lyrics. You know, there are melodic carry on songs. There are melodic American Nightmare songs. Totally, but but, uh, but not... calling re- reducing those bands. Yes, yes, to melodic course. hardcore, which I do think is a reduction. Yeah, is is a. Uh, that sounds feels derogatory to me. I would say for me, uh, there was a point in time where like youth crew and, and New York hardcore in Chicago was the penultimate coolest shit mm-hmm. with the killer always underneath, like, or like not underneath, but like always lurking, you know, yeah. as like the heavy guys, the, yeah. the great white just, yeah. And then all everybody broke edge and all of that changed and it turned into like beat down mm-hmm. being like the thing. And I'm not I, the biggest fan of of beatdown, you know. Yeah, I mean, I will say I would I will take a, a shitty local beatdown band over a shitty local melodic hardcore band all day. Yeah, same. but I think there's a there's a cosplay aspect to shitty local beatdown. You know, sure, sure. Where it's like this: if you're inauthentic, it doesn't work. Mm. If you're authentic, it works. If you're beating ass, if you're beating down. I believe you and yeah. I'm, I'm going to buy in and that that's really kind of where the line is drawn. Uh, kids, young kids in kickback and irate shirts is crazy. That's crazy. Well, the kickback thing, kickback, that's, has, that's borderline my fault. You know, like, the, yeah, uh, nobody, <laughs> I'll tell you what it was nobody. like you guys and Andrew Morrissey. Yes. That was, that's it. who rode for, for kickback. Uh, yes. and, and Dan Seeley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's literally, you know, um, and their their revival, the the renaissance that they've had. I mean, it's it's like us looking back at Best Wishes and Alpha Omega and being like, 
you guys were too close to this. You don't understand how good these are. You know, there you go. You, you, you wanted something that they're not. We're able to hear what they are. Yeah. Kickback is that to younger people where they're like, they were the, just some, some French hardcore band to you. But when you stack this up, when you stack forever war up, when you stack even no surrender, which like, I remember vividly the day that came out. I remember yeah. rushing home from school to put the CD on because it wasn't, I couldn't listen to it online anywhere. Uh, that's like a new album for me. And it came yeah. out 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, which is that, that makes me understand the old guys a little bit with like, I remember when that fucking came out, dude. nobody yeah. cared, which is, yeah. which is the case. Nobody cared. Yeah. But I'm, I, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't mean nobody should care. I'm glad that people care totally. because I agree that what they've been doing the whole time is better than most things to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's cool to see it's, but it is crazy for it's young crazy. people to be getting it. Yeah. It's wild. It's different. Uh, top five, seven inches. We've did a whole episode about this. Yeah, we did. Check uh, out the, the perfect EPs in seven inches episode. There you go. Uh, big four death metal. Morbid Angel, Deicide, Bolt Thrower, Suffocation. Bolt Thrower, Suffocation, Dying Fetus. Love it. Cannibal. I think I would say Cannibal. Oh, respect. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a great yeah. pick. Uh, are we still getting the Some Kind of Monster Watch Along? <sighs> Patreon. Patreon, Thanks, baby. <laughs> you, you guys got to know, we have these, these ideas. They're cataloged. They're back there. Th uh, time is... Yeah especially for Colin is yeah, like tough. literal money. Like they yeah. can't just like do stuff and not make it worth the time. Yeah. I think one of the things with the Patreon I'm most excited about is putting just the vault on there. Oh dude, the vault. You guys have access to everything. There's a whole, there's so many things that we've never posted because of time and just like, and we, you know, we weren't as good at this yet, which you're not mm. saying we're even good at it, but, they're not like great interviews, but there's pieces of them that I'm sure people will enjoy. And then hopefully mm -hmm. they watch them and go, Hey, this one rocks. This is a good clip. And then they just post it on your own. I encourage all of you yeah, to do little clips on your own. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Post them, do whatever, please make TikToks. I don't God's give a shit. <laughs> just do it. Uh, best bands that are named after objects. Example, crowbar nails. Uh, Metallica, <laughs> Misfits, Typo Negative. They're all objects. That's blood. Yeah, that's blood. That's an object. Uh, uh, objects. A bolt. A bolt thrower. <laughs> that is. That's literally a, a, just a Warhammer thing. It's just a guy. Yeah, that's the best one. Uh, what is a non-hardcore song you guys would each like to cover in your respective bands? impression that i get i'm dying to do it yeah i don't know if i mean a actually uh a night there's there's there were at a time talks of like doing a nine inch nail song mm. and making it like that would be great like band heavy yeah like you AFI could do march it, of pigs or something to make it e exactly but make it like no just make it heavy all the way yeah. through like no melody at all easy uh afi did um had like a whole got money yeah and it was like sick but kind of did it did it as a band but with davy singing i would kind of like to hear a song that's like sounds great <laughs> with sting's retirement do you have a favorite match or moment from him go back and watch uh there's a nitro main event him and ddp mm. who was at the retirement did you see that i haven't seen anything yet from it. no 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 they don't show it on air I saw oh. it on, on Twitter. Oh, beautiful. He was, he was there with Lex and another guy whose name I forget. <sighs> oh, yeah. I yeah. saw that. that was, uh, Magnum TA was there. Yep. Top albums that grew on you. Ooh. Interesting. So meaning something that when it came out, you were like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. And then, oh, that's interesting. Recently, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I became of an artist called Pink Pantheress, <laughs> I wrote her off. Sure. You know? It was like, this is just TikTok music. This is, I don't know what the youths are into. What is this Pink Panther-esque stuff? I see the name for years. 
I'm not interested. Yeah. Record came out. Her debut album came out in November. Never checked it out. Never bothered. Heard a clip the other day from a song. I've, I haven't stopped listening to this record in weeks. <laughs> it's incredible. So it got you. I really, I, I, <laughs> this is the, the thing I said about you British rappers. Yeah. Is sp- was spawned by that. Cause there's a guy that starts rapping at some point with the, with like, and he sounds, it's so it's, British rap is so silly. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? You are Willy Wonka. <laughs> if you want a view, <laughs> what are paradise. you rapping for? And then she sings again, and it's like, oh, it's the rare moment where a feature comes on, and you can't wait for the the for main artist to come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Pink Panther S. That she grew on me. I can't believe that record. Mine would be Bloody Kisses. Easily. When wow. I first heard it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I didn't, I did not, it didn't connect with me at all. And I had friends who were like, this is the guy who wrote Victim in Pain. And, you know, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so, like, who fucking gives a shit? You know, yeah. I did not, did not connect with me. And then even older on, later on, when I was older, I, I listened again. And I was like, yeah, these songs are like kind of hokey. I didn't get it. And then it was when I heard another record, when I heard Love You to Death. Uh. And then retroactively, everything it is makes hokey. Sense. I mean, it is. It is it, it, retroactively everything made sense. Everything yeah. clicked. That's fair. What's something that something that truly grew on me? Um, I would say King Diamond, the Eye. The first time I heard it, mm. the drum machine really shook me. It like bothered me mm. because Mickey D is such a god to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he played on first four. Um, and he's then, like one of your big four, right? You say, oh yeah, he's, big time. I'm yeah. doing, I'm doing Mickey D. I'm doing Danny Schuler. I'm doing fucking uh, Sal Abrascado. I'm mm-hmm. doing Igor, and that's yeah. that's that's my. I'm trying to do. It ain't working. Yeah, right. right. Uh, Mickey's such a god that hearing that was like, oh, they lost the sauce. When in reality, it is a guy playing on an electric kit. And he wasn't as crazy, so it made the songs harder because they're slower. Aha. Uh-huh. And and then diving into that record more, that became a top three for me. Amazing. Uh, favorite Seinfeld episode? Oh, great question. For a long time, it was an episode called The Blood, <laughs> when Kramer is storing blood in Jerry's freezer. Blood! Like, yeah. I loved that episode. Uh, then I f- discovered that it was a non LD episode. Yeah. That's very, and, late. I, I, and I felt like, Oh no, like like you, I you, felt you like, crossed your boy. Yeah. This can't be my favorite, you yeah. know? So I really tried to kind of sit back and, and really kind of sit in it. And I think it's the episode when, uh, uh, Jesus, um, Elaine gets her boyfriend blacklisted from hop sings. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, the communists. The, the communists. Yeah, yeah. Love that. That's episode. an incredible episode. Are you a communist? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite would be the subway. Oh. And <sighs> I got to go in that subway car. So that, yeah, that's right. The, right. the stage what they shot that in was right under Big Brother at the CBS lot. So all the, there's so many Seinfeld relics still there, which was awesome. Um, but that has one of like a top three Costanza moment of all time where he's lying to the the chick about being a businessman and he says yeah and you know i did that and i never looked back and then the train horn honks and he looks back (laughs) (laughs) he goes and the timing of it is straight up like an all-time seinfeld bit to me and then jerry going to coney island with the naked guy guy, and when he wakes up he's like yeah (laughs) he's just like Kramer with the with the the horse races. His of mother, course, his dude. Mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so that, fucking that, funny. That part's incredible. Elaine late to the gay wedding, dude. When when she's having the breakdown in her mind, it's incredible, dude. That's Whoa. all time, Elaine. That's like she's not done that yet. Yeah, in right. the show. Yeah, you know that's she groundbreaking is television. Hands down, my favorite <laughs> character on the show. I love Elaine. Bass. I I pray at the altar 
of, yeah, of well, Elaine Bennis <laughs> I'm on my motherfucking hands and knees. I also lo- really, really fond of, I forget the name of it. It's the episode. I think it's the jacket when Jerry gets the jacket and they meet Elaine's dad. Dude, I, every time I buy a jacket, I look in the mirror and I go, this is huge. This is huge. When did this happen? Dude. Yeah, George. Master of the house. (laughs) Dude, when he goes, pipe down, quiet boy. Yeah. Dude, that's my favorite Seinfeld moment is in that thing. Let me. You like uh, ice. (laughs) You like ice? And he goes, like it. Like it. Dude, that's my attitude about like food. Yeah. It's just like, you're going to eat that? It's like, the fuck else am I going to do? Of course. Like it. Like it. (laughs) How do you write that, God? I don't know. That's that's really a, some per- dude. When when Jerry's or when George is like, when did this happen? And Jerry's just like, yesterday. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Spins his the keys, pink, dude. I mean, I really, as a jacket guy, yeah, deeply relate to that episode. Yeah, yeah. With a with a jacket guy with a funky pink inner lining, I really relate to. But that. When he's sitting on the couch watching the Mets, like in his socks and sweats, like twiddling the his ja- feet. That's me every time. On. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I want the dogs just to put my jacket on. You know? <laughs> yeah, what a uh, show. That's the best. How do I work on screaming without murdering my vocal cords? As you can hear from my voice, I don't know. <laughs> you do a pretty extensive vocal warm up. I do. Is that, it's, is that more for singing? Yeah, yeah, big yeah, time. Yeah. And I don't know how to not blow it. It's really kind of just like sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Yeah. I don't know. Ugh. Can you talk about the fashion trends and fads and hardcore over time? Who gives a shit? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, there's been some dark moments. There's been you know? there's been dark moments for sure. I, full disclosure, definitely wore cut off jean shorts with little tiny bands and thought I looked great. Didn't learn from it. Grew up. I would say that and khaki shorts were all time worst eras. Did that too. And then like a mental locking out long sleeve khaki <sighs> shorts with like Sacconis on. Or Purple Sockinis. burn long sleeve khaki mm-hmm. shorts. Mm-hmm. Vans cl- classics. Yeah, for sure. Those are and like, look, times. I'm not going to hate on, on kids wearing baggy pants these days or like, dude, I, I truly, dude, they pull them off. It's kind of crazy. It's pretty crazy. I wish off. I could. I wish I could too. They got swag that I don't have that I didn't have when I was their age. Right. No. So, and I'm a firm believer is like, if you, if you feel good, you look good. Yeah. yeah. You know, wear what makes you feel good. Absolutely. However, when I look at like late eighties, early nineties, hardcore, (sighs) God, they looked cool. They had it. Why, Why weren't we always just going like, we should just do that. I don't know. I don't know. It's really, they, except for Syracuse, they all looked awesome. They all, they all looked awesome. Yeah, it was until Earth Crisis. Until, until Earth Crisis wore them chokers and did the the bands. And no, all respect her. All yeah, all respect my, it. A band I love dearly. Of course. Uh, Rise of the North Star episode. When Evan, give, Thank you, give Evan. it a rest, brother. It's never happening. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Okay, previously you talked about how hardcore is meant for the kids and the bands and that bands don't release albums past their second or third one. And if they do, they're part of a very small group of hardcore bands who have done that. Mm -hmm. As someone who doesn't identify as a hardcore guy, can you explain the reason for it? Bands just get less good over time. That's just how it works. If you're not a hardcore guy and you're associating with our show and discord at all, we can assume you're probably a metal guy. Or maybe like an indie guy. I'm going to go with metal. Metallica, my favorite band of all time. Arguably the best heavy band of all time. Yeah. Got way worse over time. They had the magic for five albums. And that's me giving credit to one I don't care about that much. And it ain't the Black Album. (laughs) Uh, They had it. And then a thing happens where you kind of, for them, I'm sure it was money and not needing to yeah, grind you don't, and blah, you, blah, blah, Nobody has it forever. You're definitely not going to have it forever if you have everything in the world. If you've put in the cheat codes in GTA, yes. why are you going to get the bonus missions, you know? Yep. There's no reason to clear all the objectives if you're putting nope. the cheat codes in. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, that's or a, is it, that's really well said, said. Is it part of the culture of hardcore cycling out bands since its audience skews young? I'll tell you what. Bands don't want to be cycled out. It just happens. Yeah, it just happens. Um, 
What's like, Jesus, it, uh, I can give examples that aren't re- like relevant to today so that I don't think I could offend anyone. Yeah. DYS, SSD, early Boston bands both turned into like hard rock bands when yeah. they grew up and they, they didn't like kids stage dive anymore. They didn't play anything fast. They just wanted to be like literally like Boston, the band. Rock. Yeah. You know, just rock bands. And yeah. yeah, it didn't do well because that's not what, that's not what the, the culture is. It's the youth culture. Who, what hardcore band has had, it's gotta be terror. I, I answered the it most, myself. the most good it's stuff. It's terror. It's terror. It's terror and it's all at war. 100%. Terror, all out war. Integrity had it for a minute, for sure. Yeah. But uh, still, quantity wise, it's not even close wise. to. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, right. Just by sheer, like, total records alone. You know? Yeah. How many records has Terror put out? Like 10, I think. 10. I think, ten the, I think Painted to Power was number 10. It's yeah. Fucking nothing crazy. Else. And they're nothing all else good. Comes close. Uh, <sighs> damn. Colin, what's the best? No, I'm gatekeeping this. I'm not talking about this. Um, <laughs> top three translation issues this trip to Japan. So we were getting the word pussy on menus a lot. Pussy. Pussy. It would be like this. This pussy includes pork, egg, and like where we be like, whoa. Uh, Mac got your ur- uh, a drink label with urine first day. It was like it was like a water. It was like a tea, and it was like contains urine. <laughs> Which was definitely a translation issue, but pussy yeah. and urine were the were the big ones. Did you figure out what pussy or urine was? Yeah, I mean, it was like pork, egg, and cheese. It was like oh. this dish, gotcha. dish and pussy or something. This meal, gotcha. which is insane. Uh, oh my god! This question's for Colin. What are you most excited about for the Texas run? Why is it Whataburger? I'll be honest. I mean, I am excited for Whataburger. Fuck yeah! I want. I'm try a fan. That. Yeah. My band is opening the Denton date. See you there. Amazing. That just sold out today. Hell yeah. I'll be, I'll be flying there in three days. I've heard Denton is the one now. That's what I've Let's heard. Let's see. I'm excited to go back. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite legal scam that you frequently partake in? Get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, user FBI. Yeah, officer. <laughs> uh, Favorite possibility of doing... Oh, I love this. Episode about favorite young slash new bands. That would be great. That's a great idea. How have we not even thought of that? I know. It's crazy. Best new bands. Great idea. We should be doing that twice a month. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Uh, How often do you switch up set lists on tour? Almost never. The only time... And I've... I've, I think I've told this story before. Uh, maybe like once or twice on a tour if something isn't flowing right or if like there's some kind of Harm's Way does samples a lot in between songs so we need everything to kind of flow succinctly on the Cannibal Corpse tour we were playing Temptation I thought it was a stinker for the crowd and I, I thought people weren't really digging it it's Cannibal Corpse Hate Eternal yeah. Harm's Way we're playing this kind of like convergy Jesus Lizard kind of thing yeah. I thought it was stinking up the set so I I voted to replace it with mind control and kind of talked everyone into it. And like halfway through the tour, we did that for the whole tour, much more metal song on the last day of the tour. Alex Webster's in our green room, just kind of talking with us, thanking us for the tour. We're talking to him and he says, Hey man, why'd you guys stop playing temptation? I love that song. Now I, I wanted to jump in front of traffic. So it's not always the best move. Not always the best move. You never know. You never know. Um, we, in our case, Sean lives in Connecticut, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we we kind of have to rehearse what we're gonna do because it's like okay, Sean, here's what we're gonna do. Learn, do, get that ready. Yeah. To adding other things to that is is tough. Uh, with the recent tsunami shirt discourse, my God, has there ever been a merch uh, homage that left a sour taste in your mouth? No. I don't like streetwear brands doing hardcore stuff. Yeah, that's bullshit. I don't like that. That's bullshit. When there was an obvious Forever Twenty One God's Hate shirt, that was that bullshit. was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. Um. There, there was. Yes. There, there's stuff like that. But if you're within our scene, within the yeah. culture, who yeah. fucking cares? It's. I mean, it. it Ninety nine percent of the time, it is a tribute. It is. It is supposed to be a positive thing, and that's why you get to the table. You see a band doing the thing. You're excited to do it. Yes. I can't I, I, imagine I, anybody being upset about a no. fucking. I only I, the only thing upsetting is when a corporation profits off of it. 
Absolutely. When it's when it's in, in band to band paying respect, I, that's wholly positive. One hundred percent agree. All right, uh, Mount Rushmore of legendary Pokemon. Legendary Pokemon. Shit, I don't know if I know the distinction. I know all the birds are. Um, Articuno, Zapdos. Yeah, I know Moltres. all of them. Those you are the about, old- You ever hear you you know, understand those names? Yeah, Arctic, Zap, and Moltres. Arctic Uno, Zapdos. Dos. Wow. Moltres. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zoom. Uno um, dos tres. Genius. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So what are other are there other legendary Pokemon? Yeah. I mean Mew, Mewtwo. Okay. Uh, the pterodactyl one, right? The fossil. Yeah, Aerodactyl. He's Aerodactyl. legendary. Uh Ammonite. Kabutops. Uh the the dogs in Crystal. Suicune. I don't forget the other two. Uh Giratina's legendary. What about Gyarados? Is he legendary? Not legendary. Rare but legendary because oh, you gotta grind to, to get him. You gotta you know? get him, and you I always do every time. Dude. Every time he's my man. Um, Hyper Beam, Dragon Hyper Rage, Beam is, <laughs> Hyper Beam, unbelievable, goaded. Uh, who? What's the one? Kai Kyogre or something? Love that one. I really don't know. I'm a big Mewtwo the- head. I'll be honest with you. I think it's like I think I think the store the the like lore of Mewtwo. It's awesome is like an amazing tragedy and just like yeah. a genuinely good story. It's a good story in any universe. Yeah. Like not just a Pokemon one. So big, big fan. I'm a big, I think Mewtwo is number one. Um, and the communicate you- the, the conversation that they have in the movie. Yeah. Where Mew's just like Mew and Mewtwo's like, I see now. <laughs> <laughs> like the humanity has, has ceased to explain. Like it's, it's yeah. awesome. That's me and my cats every day. Exactly. <laughs> um, did I ever tell you my holographic Mew card story? No. I, I went to some you know hobby shop and got a Japanese Pokemon set. And it uh, obviously wasn't a first edition deck because it had been in Japan for a while before it got here. Was, the, was it like Mew in the front and it was like, okay, if you open this pack, you're going to get a Mew? No, it wasn't like that. It was just a random booster pack. I opened it up and there's a holographic Mew, Japanese Mew in there. I lit- I quite literally called up my friend Brian at the time, who was the one who threw me off a bunk bed trying to do the Mankind oh. Hell in a Cell bump and I broke my, my friend bump. Al. Uh. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I called him and I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I'll probably retire pretty soon. I thought I had like made it. Like I thought I found a card that was going to change the trajectory you struck of gold. my life. You were like, this yeah. is it. I was like, uh, surely there's only one of these on Earth, and I just right. found it. So, didn't don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, the, well, what did he say about it? He was like, "Whoa, really?" Like, I think that was the day he broke my collarbone. <laughs> I think really? that was the same. Yeah, That's I why he did God. it. <laughs> He's like, Son of a bitch! But, and it's you gotta mine. distract your ass to get yeah. the Mew Bloodborne remaster or Bloodborne two. I, I, you know, listen, playing things at thirty frames doesn't really bother me because it's kind of like watching a movie. Mm. So Bloodborne too, even though I don't know what they would do. Yeah, How do you go like, back? A sequel leaves the uh, the the chance for ruining something. You know, not that it, uh, I think they there's would. There's no way they could. I don't think I mean, they would. I, expand. Give it. Put me on another. Put me on the alien planet doing shit, and then it's mm. going to be awesome. From a musician standpoint, what are the main points of getting your records pressed on vinyl? Is there something you wish the pressing industry could move on? Just the the turnaround. Being faster would be lovely. Did you know that the coloring in vinyl is one of the most toxic things? Like for the planet? Like pollution wise? Yeah. Wow. That's why that's only done in certain countries. Oh. Because they have less regulation. (laughs) Awesome. Yep. (laughs) I would say the main point of getting vinyl press is to have a physical representation of your hard work, you know? Oh, like a purpose for doing it? Yeah, it says, what are the main points for getting vinyl done? Look, man, it, it's it's art. It's a piece of art. It's a piece of art. Like, I recently, this past weekend, I got a an 80s pressing, not first pressing, because it would be way too much, but I got 80s pressings of Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets. I have those records remastered, like nice new ones. I now have end-of-life copies that are going to live in my shelf forever. 
And the other ones I'll trade in and sell or do something with because I don't need to have redundancies of them. Mm. That's art. The typo thing. That's the most money I've ever spent on a record was that Bloody Kisses record. That's a piece of art that I have on the wall. The, the, the Walk Among Us that you got me is literal art. Literal art. And it's a that's a thing where Walk Among Us is 42 years old, you know? Yeah. 42 yeah. years later, some podcast co-host gets his, his buddy a gift and it's it's a beautiful bond, you know? It's like, yeah. can, can you believe that I found this for you? Yeah, it's you special. Know? Everything about that, Glenn Danzig went over and designed and approved. And he's like a hero to both of us. So yeah. it's like, what's cooler than that? Yeah. I Let's see, I'm going to do a little scroll here because I'm so tired. Um, yeah, yeah, we're at Colin, almost Colin three is, hours. <laughs> I know. This is brutal. I don't know why we did this. Colin well, famously said he'd eat them. any... What? We don't have to do all I of know. them. He said he'd eat any meat. Does he, did he eat raw chicken and or horse when he's in Japan? I didn't see those things. I would have. Um, you would eat raw chicken? If it was like, hey, this is safe, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. If it was like fucking chicken tartare and they yeah. promised me that it was okay, I would do it. Um, yeah, I, I did eat a that. crazy like squid leg mm. that was really gamey. Ooh. It was ocean. <laughs> Pure Bright, ocean. Briny. Briny I is really what they call didn't that. like yeah. it. Yeah. How often should a band more local release stuff in a year? It's I mean, modern band, it's different. The modern system is very single EP driven. Dude, if I, if I was starting a new band, I would put out two songs every three months. Judgment style. Yeah. And then like at the end of the year, put them all on a record and do vinyl. Yeah. That's smart. That's what I would do. Do that because do, it just do seems less. Less is more. Make less them is more. make yeah. them need the LP. Yeah, you don't need to come out with an LP anymore. LPs are are what are remembered long term, mm -hmm. but the line between what is and isn't an LP is different now. Also, think about the the incremental changes you can make as a band by putting out a, a less material. Yeah, you can you can alter what your sound is, and people can be like. But the last release was different. It's like, yeah, that was only three songs ago. So for the last question, are there any songs in your band's discography that you love that never gained any traction or weren't received well? That was part one, and then part two is different. Yeah, I got one. Uh, on Post Human, there's a song called The Gift, which is like a purely instrumental um, uh, industrial song that Casey had made and he made it before he was even fully in the band. We just kind of employed him. He was doing merch for us and we kind of employed him to do that kind of those textures and, and that kind of stuff for us. I fucking love that song. That's a banger. It's not, I guess it's not instrumental. James sings on it technically. And we, the last song, it's not the last song. Uh, mm -hmm. it might be, I think it's third to last. Okay. But it's it's on the B side, and I always thought it was awesome. But unfortunately, it's you know on Spotify you can see and it's the the least played of them. I think I don't think that's fair. The uh, our least played is my one of my is like a top three. Mm -hmm. Crucifixion, the mm -hmm. last song on Disharmony. Yeah, Two. is like go back in time. I would have made that track one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, hundred percent. Did I ever tell you that when you first sent it to me, I was we were in Europe. And I put it on and listened to it. And I was like, I was, you know how those vans, you just fall asleep. You're just yeah. in a, a fucking incubator. Oh, you were scared of the ending, right? The, the like, is it a siren? Dun, dun, gay. Yeah. Literally like, <gasps> like woke me up from a sleep and scared the fuck out of me. It was That's so awesome. heavy. I love that song. Me too, man. Uh, maybe one day it'll get its day, but mm -hmm. for now. It's dead last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, the second part to that question is who has the best laugh in hardcore? The best laugh in hardcore. Yeah. You and your brother have such a similar chuckle that it makes me laugh. Like I really like mm. it. Like when you guys both are just like <laughs> that chuckle. Yeah. That right there. You guys do it identically. And that to me ah. is, is really satisfying, but I wouldn't call mm. that laugh. Brittany Miller has a wonderful Brittany laugh. Brittany Miller's got a great laugh. Yeah, it's infectious. <laughs> um, Mike Cesario's got a great laugh. Dude, James. 
James has an incredible. Oh, James, James. James, James has an, <laughs> he has an incredible. When he, when James full on like belly laughs and he does like the silent one, he like holds his stomach and it it's makes so me laugh every fucking time. Yeah, that's the best laugh I've ever heard in my life. Okay, <laughs> we're about to hit the three hour mark. And if I don't fall yeah. asleep right now, I'm going to die. Okay. Okay. I love you all so much <laughs> or I would not be here. <laughs> Harbor rules. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.